Hey everyone, happy Easter. Yeah, I guess it's Easter Sunday. Weird, huh? Sure doesn't feel like it. Not that I ever really celebrate holidays, but this is definitely a weird Easter. But um, good news, you guys. Uh, uh, we made a video yesterday. You know, if you guys want to know about that, you can check out my Twitter. Um, check out my Chelsea Vegas Twitter. That's C H E L S E Y Vegas on Twitter, at Chelsea Vegas. So that's my work profile. And um, we made a new video, me and Jay Rich. And uh, we sold some copies. So we're able to make rent. Woohoo! Yes, thank you, everyone. So today's a really good day. And also, um, I was able to get a Whole Foods delivery with Gerald Steiners. Do you guys remember any of you that have been watching me for a minute? No, I love Gerald Steiner sparkling water. It's from Germany. It's just a kind of sparkling water, but it's really tasty. It's my favorite one. And you think sparkling water, but all the sparkling waters taste different. They all have, like, different flavors. And, like, my favorite be the Gerald Steiner. The worst is the Perrier's to me. Those are my least favorite. But, um, anyways, I know no one's here to talk about sparkling water, but I wanted to mm. say about my exciting morning. I seriously was so happy, you guys. The littlest things in life, like just getting a delivery, it's very hard to get delivery windows. We don't have a car, so it's very expensive for us to get to Whole Foods because it's um, it takes, like, Two, well, two buses there, two buses back, um, and then if you were to do Uber, it's it's expensive. So, anyways, today I heard some interesting news about the virus. Guess what the new thing is, you guys? The virus actually started back in November 2019 in California. They're finding out. They're finding out that people had the flu, the coronavirus flu, had no idea that it was anything different than the flu because the symptoms are similar and you get over it just like the flu unless you're very, very sick. And they already developed an immunity, some people. So they're finding that less people are getting sick in California because they already had an immunity, which they didn't even know. So this virus is not deadly at all, you guys. It's only killing people that already were dying. <laughs> there were people that were sick in some way or another. Even if they were young, they were sick. So anything would have killed them, like any sickness that comes on. That's what happens when you get very ill. Anything can kill you. The common cold can kill you. The flu can kill you. Those are the people that are dying from the coronavirus. No one else. No one healthy. So uh, this morning I saw Remember, I was talking about Rita Wilson, who is Tom Hanks' wife. She, her and Tom Hanks both had the coronavirus back in, when was this now? March. March. It's so, I'm so lost with time. Because they were in Australia. They were in Australia, and they and contracted it, and, um, and they got sick, and then they recovered. And then I had told you guys about that she it was doing, like, a hip-hop song, you know, and, like, a week after, feeling fine. Well, I just saw... A new thing on her Twitter. Check her out. Rita Wilson. She's a verified celeb on there. She teamed up with uh, uh, with a Naughty by Nature and is doing the song. She's in the studio, so she's feeling fantastic. She had the coronavirus, and I believe she's in her 60s. Um, I don't know her exact age, but I believe they're grandparents. I think they're in their 60s. Maybe she's in her late 50s. Uh, but she recovered, and she oh, is singing hip-hop songs now, having a great time. So, For some reason it stopped. Oh. I don't know why. I'll just start it again. How is it going? Great. You had like 100 people in there. Okay, cool. I guess it's not the app. It was just their app must be. You just froze. Okay, right. Remember Bree had that a lot. I think it does that a lot. Yeah, when you start getting really busy. Yeah. So, so, sorry, um, so here's the deal. Um, yeah. So the deal is, yeah, right, you're, you're on to it, man. I always kind of start with silly things in the beginning right. because, like you said, I let people come in, but I figure for the people that watch on replay, it's always kind of funny because I'm always kind of talking about really random shit in the beginning. I just like doing that. I don't know why. You're always like, why are you? I'm like, I don't know. I just find it funny. Just whatever pops in my head at that time, you know. But the people on replay will watch it, and they'll be like, what the hell is she talking about? And it's just kind of funny to me. Because it has nothing to do usually with the rest of the scope, but I usually just I'm talking about some random shit in the beginning. I just think it's funny. I don't know. I just do what I feel. <coughs> Should I say it froze? Mm-hmm.
Am I back on? Yeah. Hey guys, sorry, I don't know, it stopped. Um, it's been doing that a lot. I don't know if it's just the Periscope. We thought it was my phone, but I think it's the Periscope app because now we're on a different phone and it did it again. But um, anyways, so I was talking about Rita Wilson. She's Tom Hanks' wife, and both her and Tom Hanks had the coronavirus. And they're, I don't know their exact age. You could look it up on Wikipedia, but I believe Tom Hanks is in his 60s. I'm not sure if she's in her 50s or 60s, his wife. But they're feeling great. She's, she teamed up with the um, Naughty by Nature, the hip-hop uh, cause you know, this is what's an interesting thing that's going on right now, you guys. A lot of people are not aware that you are not allowed to use other people's music when you make little videos. Like a lot of um, these celebs are making videos now, you know, they're dancing and singing to other people's music. And unless you have permission to do that, which very few do, it don't matter if it's your best friend. Let's say it's your best friend. Let's say you're... you're uh, Justin Bieber and your best friend's Miley Cyrus, and you guys are best friends, which they're not. I'm just throwing this out. Uh, but if their companies have not agreed for them to use their music, they still can't do each other's music. It doesn't matter. Um, so what can happen is Twitter can take down accounts for people using other people's music. And I'd be interested to see if that happens to any of these celebs. Um, it probably won't. Because they'll probably because they're celebs, so they probably will get away with it. But then once again, that won't be fair because they don't allow regular people to do that. We're not allowed to. That's what most of our accounts were taken down for is the DMCA copyright, which means whoever owns the rights to that music, they eventually contact Twitter and they say if you don't have this person delete their content, then we will take down their account because they're not allowed to use our music. And it'll be something like sometimes it'll just be on in the background of your video where you don't even realize. Like if you had your music on and then you like let's say I had music on right now while I was talking to you guys, and then I went to post this somewhere and I forgot. I've had ones taken down for that. I'm like, oh no, it was on in the background. Like I had a Demi Lovato song on one time, and they took down one of my accounts. And the way you get your account fully taken down is repeated offenses. But the problem is if you're people like us, we make a lot of videos uh, and we like to put music on them so we can have repeated offenses and repeated offenses could be like three times. But here's the catch. You don't know till maybe six months to a year later even. So by the time you find out you can't even delete that video anymore. So you can have your account taken down on ones that you can't access. Because you, if you tweet a lot, you can have tweets that are so old that you can't get to. Like, you can't scroll all the way back. I've tried. You can't. once you If you tweet as much as we do, which we don't as much anymore, but we were. But um, so it, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see. But So, for example, Rita Wilson, she obviously teamed up with Naughty by Nature, so she got the rights to do that song. Um... But, yeah, you actually have to get permission, and a lot of these celebrities, I'd be interested to see what's going to happen if any of the people, probably most people, will allow the celebs, because, especially if the celeb is bigger than them, then they want them to promote their song. But, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of nutty with music, because at the end of the day, I can see when they don't want you to use their music for... Uh, if it's like you're using their music and you're making all this money just strictly because of their music, and then maybe they have a point there. But for the most part, they're just blocking their fan stuff. You know, like it's people who love them that are like, oh, I love you. Let me make a video about you. And then they take down their account. So I think that whole copyright with the social media is pretty lame. Um, and pretty strict because I don't understand why an artist doesn't want their song to be promoted because if anything, mo the majority of the people are not making money on social media. The majority of people are just tweeting their friends and celebs and having fun like, oh my God, I went, I went to their concert and I love this. You can get in trouble for even doing that. You can get your account taken down for posting, you know, when you went to a concert or something like that. That's all copyrighted stuff. Um, and people do it just when they're excited, you know. And then I've seen it where one time I saw where Ariana Grande retweeted a fan's thing. So she was trying to be cool about, oh, that's cool, because they had done something with her video, with her it's song. And then I, I saw, because she had it still on her feed, her company had taken the person's account down. So their account had been terminated. But the, her retweet had still been there, you know, for a little bit after. Um, she eventually deleted it. But I was like, 
oh, that's so crappy. Like, you get the retweet from the celeb, but then, and you think, oh, cool, they're so happy about this. And then, like, a couple months later, your whole account's taken down because their company comes at you. And that's just another example of the greed. Because why do you need to take down your fans' accounts um, when they're just saying, hey, even if someone's using a song on, like, a video, that always promotes the artist because it's their song, you know what I mean? So you'll be like, oh, I haven't heard that song like that. That song that Rita Wilson did, I heard that song in years, and I was like, oh, I remember that song, you know what I mean? And I would not have remembered that song until someone brought it back. And so that's one of my other uh, big things that I have an issue with, like, with the world right now, because we think that we can own music. And there's only eight notes, so there's only so many combinations of music that we can make so eventually people are going to be kind of repeating things and that's the beauty of music is it's a collective and a collaboration now these artists want to own like these little riffs and stuff and say that's theirs and that they are the only one that have a right to ever use that and even with words words are not your own you put them in a phrase together but anyone could come up with a phrase because we all have this same ideas you know we're all we can only think of the same things you realize that you guys like you can't think of something that we don't understand like as humans someone can't have an idea that's out of our understanding that's why i was saying where that's where the it's hard for the dead to communicate to us because they can't speak things that we can't understand in the sense of if you've never seen something and nothing that you have seen can be described as similar to that how do you describe that like, if no, someone has never seen the color green because they're colorblind and they only see one color, like yellow, how do you describe what another color looks like? Because everything is yellow to them. So that's how we are on Earth where we don't know where the next place is, what, what even the colors are. They could be colors we've never seen. Everything is things we've never seen. So how does one describe that when you don't have the vocabulary or even the visual uh, like things to compare to where you go, it, it's like this or like this because it's not like anything. So that's why we don't know the next life. People always want to know, but you're limiting yourself to what you know on earth if you know the next life. So like, for example, Muslims believe they're going to get like, what, 72 virgins if they do, the, sometimes when they do those suicide things, right? Those suicide bombings. Um, well, that's limiting because what if there's something better than that that you don't even know? But you've said, no, that's all I want. For one thing, I don't think I'd want 72 virgins. I think that would be a living nightmare. That would be an absolute nightmare. They have no idea what they're getting. Super Heart coming in from L. Pitt. What is the name? Super Heart from L. Pitt. L. Pitt? Thank you so much. I really appreciate the Super Hearts. I'm always like, oh, it's pretty cool. I mean, the money don't come to us, but it's, it's cool. It goes to Periscope, so that's good for them. to Because, you know, this is a good app. I really appreciate what they do. So that's awesome, and I really appreciate all the hearts. Ah, it's he's so a, fun. He's a bodyguard. Oh, cool. That's a cool job. You know, one of my favorite movies of all time was Bod The Bodyguard. Oh, when I was a kid, oh, my God. I watched that thing a hundred million times. Kevin Costner, Whitney Houston. Man, I loved that movie. And the music, Whitney Houston was a good singer. Man, that, that was a shame. What happened with Whitney Houston, people always just say it was the crack. You know, that's the thing they always want to say. But what actually happens with most people, their biggest thing is the alcohol. And people think it's the drugs, but it's more the alcohol. Because alcohol is the one thing that really inhibits, you know, all your inhibitions to where you don't care about anything but that. And they think that most drugs do that. Most drugs only do that when alcohol is involved with the drug. That's what people don't realize. Even Coke. If you do Coke without alcohol, you'll like just tire out. You'll be like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm tired. I don't want to do anymore. This is, you're done. If you do it with alcohol, you'll never want to end because alcohol, for one thing, you're so inebriated. 
So what happens is most of these artists really struggle with alcohol addiction and another drug addiction is usually what happens. And also the pills are the big things that get a lot of these artists. And uh, we have these really strong pills now that are so deadly. Oh my gosh, talk about deadly is you you can OD so easily with those really, really strong like Oxycontins and stuff. Those things are insane. So I was talking about for a minute yesterday, I was in the Air Force. I'm going to get back to the virus in a second, but this will tie back into it. I was in the Air Force uh, uh, for four years when I was younger, and um, now I have VA benefits, kind of. They kind of cut me off because I have a weed card, They, but I kind of have benefits. I don't know. I don't know what that means. They literally said, you have partial benefits or something like so I don't know what that means. But anyways... What that used to mean is since I was in the military, I could go to a VA hospital. And so I did that one time when I was in Portland. I've only used the benefits twice anyways, so forget them. I don't care. I like my well, I like my weed card way better. I don't need their things because this is what happened to me. So I went to – I had an infection on my face. It was crazy. When I first met Jai Rich, it was in Portland. I don't know what happened. I got just like this where my face just got all swollen. So I go to the VA hospital, and I'm in, it was excruciating pain too. Like it was just like – I think it turned out to be just, like, some crazy ingrown hair that just got, I don't even know. But, um, so they gave me Dilaudid, which is, like, a super strong pain pill. And I just started immediately throwing up. I was so sick. And then, um, they, they gave me that to take home, a whole bottle. They, like, give me pain pills, like, nothing at the VA hospital. It's insane. Uh, so they gave me this whole bottle to take home, and so, um... I took it for the next day, and then I broke out in hives over my entire body, like the worst. So I called the doctor, and I'm like, oh, I have a rash. I think I need to come back in. And uh, so she has me come back in, and then when she sees me, she's like, you didn't say how serious this rash was. You should have stressed the seriousness of your rash. Cause I was covered from head to toe, just uh, we have some photos. And she's like, oh, I thought you meant like you had a little rash. I was like, yeah. And so um, I do not like any kind of pills at all. And so uh, I found that weed has made it to where I don't have to take any other medicine. And that I feel really fortunate because I react really strongly to well, medicine. Let me ask you a question. Um, before you started smoking weed, how much money a month did you spend in vitamins and minerals? Yeah, I was spending a fortune on vitamins too, and and uh, Tylenol, and I took all three, which I think is really bad. I think I took ibuprofen, Aleve, and Tylenol, which I don't even think you're supposed to do all three. But I used to get excruciating headaches, probably from taking all the f- Tylenol and stuff, not realizing that probably you know when you're taking too many medicines. I would take all those things and then I would take a ton of vitamins like I, I and I take St. John's wort for depression and all these vitamins not like um, pills prescribed by my doctor or any or pills like that just vitamins and like Tylenols and I and um like uh, allergy medicine once in a while you know if we got a cold but just so like over the counter stuff that you could get but um and I would oh if I got a cold I'd get cold mess and things like that I I always thought, like, oh, I'd just run for medicine if there was something wrong. Like, oh, I have a cough. Let me get medicine, you know. And I always reacted so strongly to it, too, but I just thought I needed it. And then once I started smoking weed, I just literally took out everything and even, like, each vitamin at a time. I, I just let them run out. I was, like, you know, taking vitamins, and then I was like, do I need to replace it? I don't think so. And each one just ran out. And now, like I said, what we do, um, I get a lot of minerals from our sparkling water. We get the minerals from the sparkling water, and then we eat all organics. But I don't take any medicine. We don't do any drugs. We smoke weed every day. And it's legal here in Las Vegas. It's, it's legal medical and recreational, and I have a medical card here. I've had it now for three years. I, I keep updating it every year because it's great. Um, it's cheaper uh, for medical. So um, it's cheaper to get your medical uh, renewed. You have to pay to get it renewed. It's, it's going to be cheaper because you can just count on the weed. Right, so right, so I was talking about that in my last vlog about the Raiders Stadium. So it's okay, you know, like I said, I was in the Air Force and I love air shows and I love all that stuff. 
tentacles and fingers. Cool. And at first, when I saw the photos, I was like, oh, cool. And, it's like, oh, really cool. and then as I looked at it, I I thought everyone was focusing on it, too. It was like everything on social media had become, at least here in Vegas. And I only really check out the local stuff. And I really follow the local people. So I don't see what all y'all are necessarily seeing, but I'll see my local stuff. Everyone locally was talking about it. And I thought, okay, okay. And then I'm like, wait, it's like a million dollars to do that. Because I know from when I was in the Air Force, every time we got our plane in the air, it was at least half a million dollars for the fuel. Just because, like, the fuel is most expensive. not half a million for the fuel. I'm saying half a million for the whole thing, but most of it was the fuel. And the military is the taxpayer's dollar. So when I see things that it's like, okay, I get you're trying to make people feel better, but what would make people feel better right now is maybe give that million dollars to the people that don't have it. And if I think, oh, the government's giving a little stipend check. For one thing, not everyone gets that. I mean, you have to be qualified to have certain whatever. I mean, we don't get this much. The British is awful. We're not part of that. And... Even the people that get it, you know, it's dependent on um, you know, your, your taxes for the last year, how much you pay, so like some people get more than others. But um, the people that really need it are probably not the ones who are because it's probably the people that uh, lost their job, that maybe never had a steady job, that maybe had a job on the table, or um, maybe did uh, a job more like an entertainment job, you know. Like, or a handyman and things like that where a lot these are the people that are struggling out you say oh well if I work I'm going to lay that job then sure you know what a lot of people say I need jobs because that guess what all the world would not survive if everyone only did legal jobs because there's a lot of stuff that has to be done that the government says is illegal but we still allow and I don't mean just like drugs and stuff I just mean like the shitty work like that they get mad that like when people are coming from Mexico and doing all the manual labor jobs. Yeah, a lot of people don't want to do those jobs and they don't want to pay them, uh, you know, the minimum wage and they also don't want to pay benefits and they don't want to pay these things so a lot of people pay illegal immigrants under the table. And I'm okay with that. I have no problem with that. Not one whatsoever. For one thing, they're doing the jobs that no one wants to do. You tell me you want to clean toilets and, you know, uh, all the stuff they're doing. Uh, and that's what my mom did. And we did clean toilets when I was a kid. So I know those jobs. And they're not fun. Um, and they're not thankful. They're the thankless jobs. You know, I mean, you get treated like crap. And people pee all the toilet that you got to clean up. And then, they, you know, no, don't even say thank you. Great job, guys. Thank you. And my mom was a housekeeper. I cleaned houses with my mom as well, and we cleaned the school. And she did uh, straight janitorial for big companies, too. So when I hear things like, well, if you weren't following the rules, then screw you kind of thing. Well, that's not society. Society doesn't say only some people get to be part of it because some people follow. Because for one thing, most of the people that you think are following the rules are not. As in, the people with the most money are usually the ones cutting the most corners and cheating and lying on their taxes and twisting things and fudging numbers and buying things just to avoid paying taxes while the rest of us are starving and don't have rent. And they're just doing ways to avoid helping more, like cutting corners so they don't have to pay as many taxes, which would be beneficial for everyone else. If the rich paid more taxes, then the poor would have more money available. But instead, the rich find every way to not pay taxes. Like Donald Trump didn't pay taxes for years, our president. I couldn't believe that people elected a president that they were okay with the fact that he didn't pay workers and that he didn't pay his taxes, but they wanted that for a leader. Now, like I said, I'm not political. I don't vote, and I never will, and I never have. But some things just boggle my brain, and I'm not saying the Democrats are any better. Right now, I got a bone to pick with the Democrats. I, right now, almost want Trump more than any of those boneheads. 
I mean, and what I've seen what they've done to the economy. So here's the new thing. Once again, we're finding proof the virus is not deadly because it first was spreading around California in November 2019, last year. No one even knew. They thought it was the regular flu, which it is. It wasn't till China starts barking that it's this crazy corona flu virus killing everyone. We jump on the fake news about how deadly it is. Yes, there's a virus, but it's a regular flu virus. Americans and the rest of the world jump on the news because we're so scared of dying. We're so scared our kids might get a flu virus and die. The kids aren't dying. It's the old farts that are already on their deathbed that are dying. So I don't know why you're worried about your kids. Kids always get the flu and recover. I've not even heard of one kid dying unless it was a kid with a very, very poor immune deficiency, and that doesn't count because that anything would kill someone with a poor immune deficiency. You almost can't count those people, and those are the only ones that are counted right now. So here's the thing. More people are recovering than dying. That means it would not be a deadly virus. That would mean it have a good recovery ratio. That being it's a regular flu virus. So they're finding that people in California had it. That's why now most of them are not getting it because they already have an immune to it, immunity to it. Uh, because they got it in November, didn't even know, thought it was a regular flu, November, December, the last couple months, carried about their day. Now when it comes back around, they're self-hibernating, self-isolating for something that they already have an immunity to. This was the news today. Check it out. I'm, I shit you not. So, once again, if you don't believe me, look at the facts. So, we have a virus that no one even knew. They were recovering. Now they have immunity to it. So, all the Californians should stop freaking out like all these celebs encouraging everyone to self-isolate when really... They just want to destroy the economy so no one votes for Trump. And the majority of the celebs that are telling you to self-isolate are Democrats. And like I said, I am not political, so I'm not trying to sway you one way or the other. If one thing, I would try to sway you not to vote because the whole system is so messed up. All of them are crooks, from Hillary to Trump. The only person I semi-liked was Obama. But I'm sure he's done some shady stuff, too, because they all have to do shady stuff to get to where they're at. They got to cut corners. They got to stomp on people. They got to, um, you know, really just destroy their competitors to get to the top. And so I don't think any of them are up there as heroes and you know, these wonderful people. I think most of them have just, like, trampled on everyone. And that's what politicians do. I mean, we see the debates, how nasty they are to each other. And that's what they spend their careers doing is getting in a position and then trying to get to the next one and tearing down their competitors all along the way because the whole time they're in their position, they're, you know, already starting to campaign for the next one, whether it be for the same position, the next term, or another position. So during that time, they already start talking crap about the other people. And we see that. So I think all of the politicians are assholes. And uh, they are not these wonderful public servants that they claim to be. They're all millionaires and billionaires, too. So anyone that is comfortable right now sitting at home in their mansion while other people don't have anything, there's something wrong with you. There's seriously something wrong with you. I mean, do you not have a heart at all? How can you sit in a mansion when other people starve? How do you like make that okay in your mind? How are you okay with buying like Ferraris, like five of them, when other people have nothing. How is that ever okay in anyone's mind? I don't understand that. There was a couple times I had a little bit of money and all I ever wanted to do was buy other people's stuff. Ask Jedi Rich. I like gave away money like crazy. Like if someone asked me, this girl asked me for $800 one day, I said yes. Another girl asked me for $1,200, I said yes. They were working girls, they didn't need it. Um, I gave another girl $3,000. They just needed it. And I, you know, 
I didn't ask why. I didn't care. You know, it, whoever came to me, if they needed something, they didn't have to tell me what they needed. They just said, I'm in a bind right now, Joy. Can you help me? And I said, if I had the funds, absolutely. And now we don't have the funds, and I don't care. We spent it. Gave a lot of it away. Gave a lot to my mother-in-law. Um, she had given us some in Panama, so we paid her back, and then we continued to pay her additional. Uh, we paid her lawyer every month for three years um, to try and uh, save her house. Was you know and going through. She got fell behind after her father had passed away. So I am no way am I trying to toot any horn here. Don't don't get me. Don't be thinking that. That's not what I'm about. What I'm saying is. I've never felt okay sitting on money while other people needed something. That just doesn't work in my head. I'm not like, oh, I'm just going to just. Now, one thing I did do, which now I feel bad about, is I was bulimic all those years. So in that sense, I was very greedy because I ate food and then threw it up while other people were starving. My dad pointed that out to me time and time again that he'd say, he, he couldn't understand bulimia because that was what he just didn't understand how you could do that when other people were starving. And now I get what he was saying. Uh, but at the time, you know, I was in my addiction, so I was like, All right, whatever, I don't know what to do. I was so addicted, I couldn't really stop. It took many years to be able to stop, as you guys know from if you've been following my story at all. Um, but now that I'm not bulimic, and now we live so minimally, I can't fathom, even if we ever start making money, I know I'm going to just want to help everyone I know, and that's just the way I am. Um, I already know immediately if I ever make any more money, I'm helping my mother-in-law again, because she even helped us during this crazy time, and she doesn't have much. She she paid this, We pay the cell bill every month for her, for our phones and for her, but this month she paid the sell bill for all of us, which was very, very nice. It was helpful because we just got rent by selling some videos. Um, so it's rough out there for people all over, and especially in Vegas because so many people have lost their jobs. And there's so many people that could help, and they don't. They just make stupid videos and just say, look how cool I am in my huge mansion. Let me show you guys how I live in during the quarantine I have, like, my, my own personal gym and everything. You know, it don't matter to me. I don't even ever leave my house, so it's no different. A lot of these celebs don't leave their places very often anyways because their places are so huge and they don't, you know, like all the publicity of going out. So they make their home, like, a place where you don't have to leave. Well, so how is that anything similar to what we're experiencing? They're acting like they're like, oh, it's so tough doing this isolation process. Yeah, right. For one thing, you guys are stoked because you don't even have to show up to anything because the only thing most of the celebs have to do is once in a while show up like to a TV appearance or something. Well, now they're doing that all via, you know, the Internet here where you can, like they're doing, I saw Miley and uh, Jimmy Fallon were interviewing each other through the one of the apps where they had the double w window going on. So um, I don't know all these apps they're using. There's so many new ones now I can't even keep track. Um where people are like, oh, have you checked out this one? Have you checked out this one? My sister asked me about Marco Polo. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Um, but uh, so now it's even more convenient for the celebs. And then they act like we should be doing what they're doing. Yeah, it must be nice when you have millions of dollars and then to sit in your mansion that is so much room that you basically, you know, it's a little community there. Must be nice. But for the rest of us that live in tiny little places that we're about to be kicked out of, because we can't pay rent. Yeah, it's not so much fun self-quarantining for no reason, for a virus that isn't deadly. And that people are recovering from, and turns out most of the Californians already have an immunity to. The ones that are self-isolate, and most of the ones I'm talking about live in California. Most of these celebs live in California. They're the ones say, so, oh, oh. And now come to find out, not only did I already tell you it wasn't deadly, people were coming. Now we're finding out they already had it back in November. 
So you got to look at the numbers. If you don't believe me, look at the numbers. The numbers are showing that more people are recovering than dying, and substantially more people are recovering. Like hundreds of thousands are recovering, thousands are dying. Like under 20,000 are dying, hundreds of thousands are recovering. Which is what Dr. Drew said in the beginning. And then he reneged on that, which made no sense to me because he's still accurate. Why would you say you were wrong for something you're still right about? Why not wait till you're actually wrong to say you were wrong? He's still right, and he said he was wrong. So that made me once again feel that all the celebs are just part of this they want. And you say, why would anyone do this? I don't understand. <coughs> Excuse me. So I have a lot of damage. So when I do bong hits, I cough, and it's getting so much of this stuff out of my chest from all the years of bulimia. Anyways, um, why would someone do this? Well, if you guys don't remember, just a couple months ago, the Democrats tried to impeach the president. Do you all remember that? Like, it was, like, really big news, and now we've, like, forgot about it. And then, uh, and then Trump bombed another country. We forgot about that, too. And then he also put a tax on China. We kind of forgot about that. All these things. And then you go, why would these things happen to our economy? Why would someone attack the U.S. economy? Uh, I don't know. Do you think maybe if your country got bombed or you got a new 25% tax on all your products to Americans or you're a Democrat and you want the Democrats to win, don't you think all those are good reasons to get Americans scared over a virus that's not even deadly? It's just a regular flu virus, but if you can scare them, then they can destroy their own economy on their own. And then guess what? Probably some things will change once our economy isn't uh, going as great as Trump was saying, so that's what everyone is hoping for. So the Chinese would hope that then the, the tax would be removed. The Democrats would hope that people would vote for a Democrat and not Trump because if the economy is in the toilet, they would hope you wouldn't uh, vote for the same president, whereas the economy was going really great. And if you remember, we have an election coming up this year. So they were worried. And they already tried to impeach Trump. That didn't work. And if that other um, a judge dies, who she's very, very ill, um, and now if she got the coronavirus, she probably would die because she's very ill already. If she dies, then Trump is going to be very powerful because he gets to appoint another Supreme Court judge. And that's what the Democrats have been very worried about. And they also know that she's probably going to die pretty soon, so they want the next president to be a Democrat because she'll probably die during the next president's term or, or during this virus even. And so they really want the next president to be a Democrat so that they can appoint um, a Supreme Court judge that, that the Democrats want. That's the biggest thing. That's why it's really, really important to get a, for them to get a Democrat in this year. So they don't mind destroying the economy and making the poor people suffer more than we already do. They don't care. We suffer on a daily basis, and the government doesn't ever step in. Uh, you say all oh, things like welfare and food stamps. Those are a joke. Um, uh, my mom did those one time when I was a kid, and it was such a joke. She, I mean, it was. It, it just. It was. It, it doesn't. It's not enough for anything. She just. It's like I'm not dealing with it. She hated that. Um, because she thought it was so just, you got treated like crap for, for pennies. She said, forget it, I'll just get another job. So she worked three jobs instead. And, you know, um, it do, it's not enough for people. People go, oh, yeah, people just living the high life on welfare. Oh, really? On welfare is fucking pennies. Are you kidding me? And food stamps. And then most of these people have several kids, too. And, they, you know, it's not enough. We, we live in these apartments, and uh, there's people that have, their, like, five kids in these tiny places. Um, we are in the two bedroom, but we uh, used to live in the one bedroom and we had a family that lived next to us, five children in a one bedroom apartment. And the one daughter was autistic, so she beat her head against the wall all day long. The poor mom, it was like, and they were on welfare and food stamps and stuff. It's not enough for these people. Um, and it's a joke, it's a slap in the face. Most I told you about, um, Jerry Rich's sister is schizophrenic. 
she's she's very very schizophrenic to where it's she's eight hours. She's a lot of times on the street, but she does technically have a home with Jairus's mother. But she doesn't choose to stay there very often. She likes being out. She'll be out for like two weeks and then she'll come back home. And Jairus's mother worries about her. She doesn't know where she is, you know. And then she always gets back home. Um, she'll just walk. She walks for miles and miles and miles. But the government only gives uh, Jairus's mother seven hundred dollars for his sister. Seven hundred dollars does not take care of Annette. Her name's Annette. Uh, Jarvis's mother pays for everything for her, you know. The seven hundred dollars, you know, whatever. Thanks, but that's that doesn't pay for a human being for their livelihood. I mean, because she can't work. She's in no state to work. She's very, very ill. I mean, she's the schizophrenic where. One second, she'll be like, hi, Joy. And then um, two seconds later, she's like, fuck you, you fucking bitch. You know, like she's, she's got it very, very extreme. And uh, she gets violent. And, and so uh, $700 is a joke. That's what the government thinks uh, for dealing with someone that is schizophrenic. That is a full-time job. Joey's mother has to work a couple jobs and take care of her, and it's very hard. And like I said, when when she's out, it's not any better because she's worried about her. She ch- she drives around looking for her. We've drove around looking for her and stuff because especially when she's gone for a while, we don't know even know if she's still alive, you know. So the government does not help people that are um, have hardships ever. So once in a while, you'll see the government step in for, like, tiny little things and they'll make a big deal about it, like this, like these checks that people are now... I mean, I almost wish they didn't do it because it's such a joke and now people are acting like it's something. I mean, I'm glad they're doing it because I want... For the people that get it, I'm very thankful because every little bit helps for people right now. We don't personally get it, and, I, you know, I wouldn't want it, to be honest, because fuck the government. I don't want their fucking money. Fuck them. But the thing is... What's bad about it is now everyone goes like, oh, the government's so nice. They're sending me $1,200. It's all right that they destroyed my livelihood for political gain. But they gave me $1,200. So now I feel good. That is such a joke. They just destroyed our economy and you get $1,200. Your world has just completely been turned upside down and they said, here's $1,200. It'll make it all better. Or whatever the amount is. Some people, I don't know what the amount is. I think it varies according to your tax bracket. But... It's somewhere around there. So that is a slap in the face to people. And that's why I say I almost wish they didn't because now people are thinking everything is okay and that the government has your back, and they don't. They don't. They do not. They never do. And I don't know why people think they do. For one thing, we have things like cigarettes and alcohol that are fully legal, that we know 100% those are so lethal to people. Alcohol is a cleaning solvent and a poison. And it is legal. And it kills people day in and day out, and especially with DUI accidents. And it's still legal. And it's legal to have parking lots at bars. But then people are not supposed to drink and drive. Then why have a parking lot at a bar? You think those cars are not going to be then be filled with the people that were just drinking in the bar and then they're going to drive home and kill someone? Talk about things that we should be focusing on, making alcohol not something that's so praised. I mean, I know they made it legal way back and we'll say, oh, we can't do that again because I never wanted it illegally. But in our society, we act like alcohol is good. I mean, it's on TV. It's like, oh, just be, just be responsible. Okay. No one can be responsible once they start drinking. That's the thing. You lose your inhibitions and it, and it inebriates you, which means you don't know what you're doing. So you can't be responsible when you don't know what you're doing, and they know that. So it's a joke to say, drink responsibly. We used to, when I was in the military, they give us safety briefings on Fridays because everyone's alcoholic in the military for the most part because uh, you're not allowed to do any kind of drugs, and especially not weed, and you get tested often. So most people don't mess around with that. So everyone does alcohol, which is fully legal in the military to be a full alcoholic. That is no problem. Most of them are. And I was when I was in the military. And they would do these safety briefings. which were just a joke. I mean, it was like... 
Okay, don't drink and drive. And if you do think about drinking and driving, call this little card and this person will come pick you up, which was like this. Okay, they had this system. I forget, it was like the Airman Buddy program. I don't even remember. But it was like where these people sign up to be the DDs for like the weekend. But there's only like, I don't know, 10, 10 to 15 people that maybe sign up to do this uh, on the weekends. And there's <laughs> hundreds of thousands of people on base. And they expect like that to be the option if you are drunk. Uh, Cause they say, cause people go, well, I don't want to pay for a cab. Cause there wasn't Uber back then, you know, and cabs were expensive. So like, Oh, but this is a free thing. So they had this thing. And that was the way they say, there's no excuse for you to ever drink and drive. Cause we have the airman buddy program. But if you ever called them, they never could pick you up because there was everyone trying to call them. There's like 15 people that would do it on a weekend. Maybe at a max, that'd be high. Maybe like 10 to, cause it was a volunteer program. And these 15 people are trying to pick up every drunk person on a Friday night in the Air Force. It was such a joke. So then if you got in trouble, they would say, there's no excuse. You did not use them. And you're like, I tried to call them. And then they couldn't show up. So I thought I was sober enough to get in my car. I mean, that's what would happen to people. I didn't um, get a DUI in the Air Force, but I did get one after. I don't drink anymore. And I am very very upset at myself but fortunate in the same token that I had an accident a very uh, an accident where um, a serious accident I flipped my car but luckily I was the only one involved there was not another car or person if I had hurt another person man my life would be very different right now I, I don't know I, I, that would be I don't know how I could live with myself for that I'd be very 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 hard um, and I know people do have to live with that and that. And so I'm so thankful that mine just turned out to be, uh, I just destroyed my car. Yeah, well, first of all, we have a theory here. Those of us, some of us that are here in Las Vegas were chosen because we died. Like, we would have died, but then something intervened. Like, here's yeah, like, thing. I've had so many times that I pretty much died. That's, That's what I'm saying. One. That was when, yeah, I flipped my car. I was drinking and driving. And I flipped my car. I, uh, I was getting off an exit, and I missed the exit, and so I went into a ditch, and the car flipped. And then um, I I don't remember any of it except for or I remember getting off the exit, and the next thing I remember is waking up in the hospital. So um, they said I was, like, totally out of it, but then I puked all over the cops and everything. It was awful. I didn't even know anything that happened until I went to meet with my lawyer, and then it was really embarrassing to hear the whole story. You're like, oh, gosh, they tell you exactly what happened, and it was not pretty. But um, it was so scary, too, because I don't remember any of that. That's what's scary, too, is I don't remember any of the accident except for getting off. It's scary because you woke up, you see, because if you hadn't woken up, how could it be scary? Think about it. You didn't know what happened. If you were dead, you'd be dead. Right. The part that's scary is that alcohol can put you in that state. That's what I'm saying is scary. That's why I... So then every time you went out to go have one drink of alcohol, you thought to yourself, shit, am I going to end up wrapped around in the fucking hospital? Right. Day? No, that was, it was pretty bad. I was, uh, what was I, 20? That's a scary thought. My brother had just died. He had just died the month before. So my mom had committed suicide. How did your brother die to so they don't, uh, they don't Motorcycle know. accident. So my mom had committed suicide when I was 20, when I was in the Air Force. And then I got out. And then um, two years later, my brother died in a motorcycle accident. And then a month later, I got my DUI. Because I was, you know, obviously not doing well. <laughs> I was a wreck at that time. Um... And then I sobered up for a couple of years, so that was good. But I still was bulimic during that time, so it was just yeah. a mess. Yeah, it's a big mess. Yeah, but uh, now we do not Wait, drink alcohol. What you're talking about. <laughs> now we do not drink alcohol at all. So, and I would not. You could not pay me right now to drink alcohol, even in this state right now. Like even without money, if someone paid me to drink alcohol, I would say no. I'd say no. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I can't take the money for that. For any of the things, like if they paid me to uh, eat certain things right now, the stuff that makes me sick that I said, no, I will only eat organics now. Because 
it makes me sick for a while. It's not just like in that moment. Like I get sick for like weeks after. Like I just had some. We had to when during this time they didn't have my organic beef. I like to eat organic oh, yeah, beef, yeah. so I had to have some other options. <laughs> and I, I, I'm telling you guys, I'm still dealing with it. Like my stomach has been messed up since because we had to get um, organic chicken and we had a wild fish. We had some salmon, some halibut, and some tuna. Because one day they didn't have anything, so we just got um, a couple of options of fish for a couple of days. And my stomach has been out of whack ever since because um, I, I messed up my digestive system so much from 15 years of bulimia. So I'm on a super strict diet, but I firmly believe that if everyone ate like I did, they would feel better. And that's why I'm always just telling people. Now, I could be wrong. It could just be for me since of uh, my digestive system. But I know it works for Jedi Rich as well. So I already have one test patient right here. And he didn't believe me about anything. Because first I said, let's cut out the gluten. That was the first thing. Well, first we had cut out sugar because we did Atkins. So we knew about that sugar is bad. So we had cut out sugar. Um, but then we kind of got back into eating more sugar. And everything has sugar. So I'm not talking like eating things that you know are sugar. I'm saying just sugar is in everything. So when you're doing like an Atkins or a I guess you make sure there's not yeah, you're not consuming anything with sugar. Most people are consuming way more sugar than they realize because it's in everything, and everything breaks down to sugar. But what was I saying? I have to <laughs> totally lost there. my train of thought for a second. But um, uh, I was saying about the diet. And, oh, yeah, so Jedi Rich didn't believe me on any of this stuff. So first I was like, let's cut out the gluten. And he's like, oh, I that's because people say... You, you only have to do gluten-free if you have a gluten allergy, but no one should eat gluten. Everyone has a gluten allergy. Look at the symptoms of a gluten allergy, and you will have the symptoms. Everyone does. And we just take those as, like, common now, like, all the things that, like, the normal, like, pains that people get, like, the gassiness, the, you know, like, the upset stomachs, the aches, pain. Like, we're just so used to these things on a daily basis. People are just... Like, oh, that's just how I feel. Oh, I just have knee pain or I just have... You don't have to. You do not have to. And when you eat the way we do, you will not have those pains. They go away as you take the weight off and as you eat healthier and as your body builds with the new protein of the organic meat, real animal meat, organic animal protein meat is the best building blocks for your muscles and your bones and everything. So as it gets built back, then all those pains go away. I used to have the worst knee pain. I thought I was going to need knee surgery or something. And I worked for these knee doctors. Um, I helped open a knee uh, clinic in uh, Tigard. <laughs> that was called Tigard, Oregon. It's right out of Portland, Oregon. Um, and I thought I had knee problems. And the doctors looked at they x-rayed my knee and they're like, no, you're all right, you know, it doesn't seem to be a problem because what it was was a knee injection clinic. It was for people that have uh, osteoporosis in their, in their knees and, uh, you know, arthritis. And then um, they lose the hyaluronic acid, which is the coating um, for that keeps your knee. It keeps your bones from not rubbing against each other and all your joints from rubbing against each other is this acid that's in your body. Um well, as you get older or if you have an injury, you lose some of that. So this clinic was, they would inject people with that, and it would help them not have knee surgery and stuff. It was pretty cool. And so they wouldn't have to get knee surgery. It was a pretty cool clinic, but I think it's still open. I don't know. It's called Reflex in Portland. Oregon. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. You went know, yeah. the doctors. Yeah, I, I helped them open that clinic when I was in Portland. Oh, so you learned a lot about the lot. medical field. Yeah, the medical field. So I was their only employee. They hired me, and we opened the clinic. And so I did all the billing and everything. I was and I was the front desk. I was their assistant. I was. It was just me and the two doctors. So that was fun. I did that for about two years. But um, anyways, back to so I thought I was gonna have knee problems, but um, during this time when I worked for the doctors, I was bulimic. So I was bulimic when I had all of these jobs. You know, most people didn't know I was good at hiding it, but. I started to know that some of my aches and pains were probably because I was unhealthy. But so I, I had the doctors look at me and, I, and they said, no, your knee's fine. And I was like, man, it hurts so bad. How can they say it's fine? Because it just hurts so bad all the time. 
And now I'm finding that it had all to do with my diet. And once I changed my diet, cut out the caffeine, cut out the alcohol, ate organics, all of these pains go away. Like ones that you thought would never go away, like old injuries. You know, I broke my foot in Panama. I thought that would never heal. It still hurts, but it's every day getting better. Um, I, uh, you know, I sprained a wrist when I was young. You know, little things like that where you have these injuries that you think are just these nagging pains forever. They don't have to be. And weed is also fantastic for pain and it heals you it not only just numbs the pain like a lot of uh, pain pills just numb the pain they don't actually heal you weed heals you and helps minimize the pain at the same time as it heals you so I recommend weed for anything and everything because here's the beauty of weed and you don't have to actually smoke it you can take CBDs um, if you don't want to get stoned, just do the CBDs. CBDs are the healing part of weed. It's the cannabinoids. That's where the most of the healing part is. But there's actually healing parts in all of weed. So uh, weed is made up of um, the THC, which is what we would think of as the stony part. That's what people think that this will get you more high. Uh, the CBDs, which are more the healing thing. And then the terpenes. And all of these are oils. And they can extract the oils so that you can get just CBDs or just THC. You can have that now. Um, or when you smoke weed, it has both. All three. The terpenes, a lot of people don't realize terpenes are really important. And the terpenes are the different aromas and the essential oils. They're all essential oils, but the aromas, so you have the citrus, the mint, the lavender, uh, the pine, and what am I forgetting? Or I might have forgot one. Um, can't think of it right now. I may have forgot that one, but the, and there's like around 200 something terpenes. So what you'll find when you do weed is you find ones that work really well for you, and certain terpenes work well for different. There's ones that you can actually research for. They do different things. Like myrcene is one that's for relaxing. So you'll see that in a lot of indicas, but you'll also see that in sativas. Now sativas, if you don't understand what sativa and indica and hybrid is, I'll go over that really quick. But um, sativas generally are going to be more uplifting. They're, see, most people think of weed as the indicas, where you get tired, and you watch couch potato, and eat and munchies, and that's their experience with weed. Those, for one thing, are generally usually more the indicas, but everyone is different, so I'll get into that for a second. But generally, rule of thumb, those will be your indicas, and then sativas will be what uh, are for more inspiration. Like people do sativa and they actually, that's where we get hyper. People think you're on coke and it's just weed because it can be very uplifting. I mean, you can almost feel like you're like on coke. It's so like, wow, I have all this energy. It, it can be very uplifting on some sativas. The downfall of some sativas is they can give you anxiety if they're too much because you can be getting where your heart rate starts going almost like similar to coke I mean very similar in that sense if you've ever tried coke I don't know if you have or haven't but I have <laughs> a lot um what's funny is I thought certain things like coke and alcohol I thought I would want for the rest of my life until I discovered weed and uh, you say discovered I never I had only tried weed you know a handful of times before 2016 and I always tried it when I was drinking, and I just didn't really like it. And I thought, oh, whatever. And my sister was a stoner, and I didn't really ever like it. And then in 2016, I tried the, the actual legal medical weed, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> Much better than maybe the experience you'd had of trying some one shitty dried-out weed or something, you know. And you, there's so many things, there's so many options. You can, you know, do so many different ways of consuming the weed. You don't even have to smoke it. We choose to smoke it. We've tried all the ways. We first did edibles. Um, the thing I don't like about edibles is the sugar content. So watch that if you're doing edibles. Um, if that the sugar will get you, and it kind of can upset your stomach. The mix of the weed and the sugar is not a good combo. I found. Well, sugar is not good, period, but something about it really unsettles your stomach. If you find that, it's because of the sugar. It's not the weed that's upsetting your stomach. That's the edibles. We'll do that sometimes. Um, but but there's so many different ways. You can cook it. Now they have cooking oil. They have teas. They have mints. They have all kinds of stuff. Lotions, everything. So um, so your sativas are going to be your uplifting Indica's generally be more relaxing. And your hybrids are just any combination of the two. And they have so many now. 
So, and you'll have ones that they'll say this is more indica dominant and this is more sativa dominant. They'll have ones that are 50 50, where it's just, dominant. and there's so many. And so, what you have to do if you are in a state that's legal is you just got to try a couple things until you find what you like. But I would recommend always, for the most part, sticking with the premium stuff. You're going to, you know, on the, because the, most dispensaries will break out. Uh, we avoid the lower. So it's cheaper, but, you know, you get what you pay for. It. And then the stuff that's, more expensive is really, really good weed. Um, that's the cool thing where some of that bottom stuff is more similar to what you maybe experienced before. So if you're going to try it, and do like it, they splurge a little and get a good experience so that you're not like trying it and then, oh, I, oh, this is what I remember. I don't like it. Go for the good stuff because it does make a difference. And like I said, the, what's really important is the THC and the terpenes. Those are both important. So people will look at the THC content, and that's what they advertise at a lot of dispensaries, the THC content. And you want a good number there. You don't want really low, but you also want good terpenes. And you go, well, I don't understand. But that's where you would have to try some to kind of get a feel for which terpenes you like. Like I said, there's myrcene, linalin, there's all these different ones, um, um, the pinings, there's, um, and they all have to do with the different aromas. And you'll see, like, the L's are the citrus ones. The P's are more like the, uh, the pinene is the, the, the earthy pine mm-hmm. ones. Um, and you'll, you'll start to figure out, You know, some of them, um, I don't even know all of them. There's like 200 or something, but you'll just see the ones that you kind of, you'll see over and over and you'll, oh, I like that one. I like the L's personally, like the limonene and linalol and stuff. Any of the L's, they're the citrus, they smell wonderful. And I used to think weed didn't smell good. Once you start smoking, you'll be like, I just put the jar in my nose. Oh, it's so wonderful. You get so, you just love it. It's it's crazy, but um, it's so beneficial. So we have cannabinoid receptors in our body naturally. Mm. So actually everyone is made to consume weed. (laughs) Our bodies were made to consume weed because it's from Earth, and they made it illegal, and that's not fair. And a lot of people are lacking because they're not getting weed because weed actually can satisfy a lot of the things that people are using other means to satisfy, like food and drugs and caffeine and alcohol um weed can fill all of those things it's amazing people go oh well when i smoke weed i get the munchies so i'm just gonna get fatter that was my biggest concern believe you me my biggest concern when i first started uh smoking weed because i was still i was still struggling with my bulimia that i hadn't fully recovered this was 2016 i had first stopped in 2015 i still battled with it i kind of still threw up a couple of times in 2016 so i was still not really sure how that was going to work if i was going to you know revert back to bulimia too if i smoked weed you know i was very nervous about that um because i was like oh if i get the munchies then i'm going to want to throw up you know and all of these things that I, I did think through. But here's what I found out. For the first maybe couple weeks, I did get the munchies a bit. Like, I was like, oh, man, oh, you know, and I had fun with it. And I just I, I let myself get a little bit, little bit heavier than normal. And I thought, whatever. And then I realized that most of that was in my head. Most of it was I thought I was going to get the munchies. And so I was allowing myself that time because, for one thing, I still kind of wanted to hold on to my bulimia. So I was allowing this opportunity of, oh, I'm so stoned, I'm going to overeat, and now I can, oh, no, I have to throw up. So I was creating that. And what I found, too, is when you eat healthy, you don't ever crave food when you smoke weed. It's actually the opposite. It can actually be quite an appetite suppressant. What happens is most people are unhealthy their first time that they uh, consume the weed. So then their body is saying you are undernourished. You can be obese and be undernourished. Seems crazy, but you can be completely obese. You could be the largest person in the whole world. And you could be undernourished to where when you smoke weed, they, your brain would think you need food because you need nutrition because all you're giving your body is just junk all day long. So what the weed actually is telling you to eat is nutrition. But unfortunately, people will grab the macaroni and cheese and hot dogs and pretzels and uh, potato chips, you know, um, instead of 
The hot dogs probably be the best bet, but except for the hot dogs, have so much crap in there. But at least it's some sort of meat. But mm, I don't know about that one. But um, that would be your best option out of all the ones I said. Because what you want to eat and what you should eat if you get stoned is grab some meat. And then you'll find you don't get the munchies. Eat some some substantial meat like steak or a hamburger or a big old piece of chicken or something. And you'll find you're not so hungry anymore. You only get the munchies when you grab the sugar stuff. Because like I said before in my blogs, sugar, once you have sugary substances like the high sugar, which is everything, your, the sensor in your brain gets turned off to say that you're full. So once you have that sugar, then you're going to want more. And I mean, I don't know the exact when it sets off for every person or which thing it is. But I know certain things, it don't matter if you had one cookie or the whole thing. It's like once you have that cookie, it goes. So I believe it's any of the things that I've spoke of before that are not from this earth. Because I don't find that happens as much when you're eating organics to where you just go nuts. But it can can happen if you choose sugary options for organics. So it still goes back to the sugar. But here's the thing, with all of that processed food and all of that packaged food, all of that breaks down to sugar. So that's why all that is just all bad. But now when we got to the organics, you can't just go, oh, any organics are fine, because now you still have all of the sugary things with organics, like fruit is super high in sugar. So if you grab fruit, you're going to keep eating fruit even if it's organic. It's still going to be better than the non-organic, but it's still like you still have to watch what you're choosing. That you know what I mean? That people think they can just do cross the board. Oh, if I just do organics or if I just do vegan, then that'll be fine. No, it's what you're choosing when you're choosing that. Like if you were a vegan and you were choosing um all raw really uh as high a protein as you could get from things like beans or something or sprouts and stuff, then that would be a lot healthier than what people are doing right now as vegan. But like I said, the most healthy thing you can consume is animal meat. Real animal meat. Mm -hmm. That's going to make you the thinnest, the fastest, the uh, smartest, because you gain knowledge from I, animals. I agree. I'm not just saying that because because my family had a barbecue restaurant. <laughs> I know. Jared, they had they sold Traegers. You know those Traegers. Those uh, those are the best. My my stepmom had one. This is funny because my stepmom had one in uh, Oregon, and she went nuts about this. You know, for years. I mean, it's all oh, god I ever heard about this Traeger. Oh, because she'd make her turkeys in there. It makes fantastic meat. And then I meet Jared Rich, and his family owns a Traeger company. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> this Traeger thing. I mean, because I just couldn't hear, it, I, it was like, she would not stop talking about this Traeger for years. And I was like, oh, you're kidding me. And um, they are really good. But they they were very, uh, they were expensive, and then they tried to chintz them down in China, and now they're not as good as they were. Because they were good when they were a, an expensive grill. That, sometimes things have to be expensive. That's what I was saying right now. Organics are expensive because it costs more to provide good treatment for the animals. Um, and since less people are choosing organics, it's more expensive. If more people were choosing organics, then the price would go down. Because it's whatever the masses buy brings down the price. So when everyone is buying conventional, then those prices get cheaper. If everyone is buying organics, then those prices would get cheaper. Does that make sense? So if you love animals, but you want to eat meat, your best bet is to choose organics, no GMOs, um, uh, uh, no hormones or steroids, and do like the cage-free, pasture-free. You, know, you see all these things now. You can see them, and those ones are always more expensive. That's what people go, oh, why is that one more expensive than that one? And then you read, and they'll say all these things, and it's usually the treatment of the animals if it comes to, uh, if you're looking at meat, usually it's more expensive because of the treatment of the animals. And here's the other thing. Not only is it the treatment of the animals, it's the treatment of yourself because they treat that animal 
then you consume that. So for one thing, any animal that was treated better, you are going to have a better experience when you consume that animal because it, it didn't have this horrible life on earth. That's one aspect. So in one way, the vegans are right. If you're consuming these animals that they torture, that's probably not too much fun. But at the end of the day, it, it, it don't matter once they're on the other side. But it is better if the animal got to have a nice experience, it's how much nicer, you know? Um, and then also, you're not consuming those antibiotics and steroids and hormones that they gave to that animal. That is why people are getting larger as well. So all of the, there's so many of these factors. That's why it's hard for me to even, these. I can go on for days because it's not just one thing. It's so many things. It's the hormones, the steroids, the gluten, the sugar, the caffeine, the alcohol, Um, Like there's so many aspects right now that are just compounding on people to where we have whole new levels of obesity. People are larger than they've ever been before. When you watch TV, actors are larger than they've ever been. Um, And it's not just they don't just choose larger actors. It's the same actors now are not as small as they were because what's happening is as you eat that food, let's say let's say you are uh, a. I'm going to I'm going to put a scenario here, okay, of a person. This person is an athlete. They are the gym nut. They eat uh, an all protein diet. They do uh chicken, uh they do um uh, baked chicken every day and um uh and 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 white uh white you know, do the eggs with just the white, you know. And uh you know, one of those kind of people, right? But they don't do organics, okay? But they're doing this, you know, Atkins sort of diet, right? You know you these people at the gym, you see when they're all ripped, right? Well, the one thing that they're getting, which the other people, you know, they might be not, they're probably doing caffeine too. Most people are doing caffeine. But let's say they're not doing caffeine. Let's say they're doing, just so they're doing conventional chicken and conventional eggs, right? Now they're ripped, right? You see their brother got it. But get, this is what's happening. Everyone is getting bulky. You're seeing people get larger and larger, and you say, oh, they want to be that way. Not all of them. What's happening is since they're eating that chicken, the chicken was given hormones and steroids. So now that gym guy is getting the hormones and steroids from the chicken, so he's getting larger even if he's not taking steroids. You know, some of them are taking steroids on top of it themselves. But, and they say, oh, well, they want to be large. Well, great for the ones that want to be large, but not everyone is wanting to be large. Maybe that's the guy that wants to be real lean is trying to run, not trying to bulk up, but he's bulking up even by just eating chicken because he's getting the hormones and steroids from the chicken that he's eating. So he's going to the gym trying to lean now, not bulk up. He's the guy running, you know, doing the, the, the all protein running, trying to stay lean, but instead he's getting bulkier and bulkier. And he might be fit, he might be ripped, he might have a six pack, but he's just feeling bulkier and bulkier. Have you seen those guys? They get bulkier and bulkier. <laughs> and they don't want to be that way. Some of them do, don't get me wrong. There's some guys that are, that's their thing, they don't want, don't want to fit through the door or something. I know my stepbrother, the one, he wanted to be like Arnold, where you had to turn sideways through the door. He thought that was cool back in the 90s. <laughs> Everyone was doing that where your arms would be out like this. You know, you can't you know, go sideways because you can't put your arms down. You know that look? Well, some people are going for that look. But not everyone is going for that look. But everyone is starting to look like that because of the hormones and steroids that they're ingesting. So that's why I stress. So think about this. Why would you want to save money on the thing that's... how? your entire being like you're putting this in your body it's going to affect it's going to control uh, how your bones are developed how your heart is how all your organs are how you look how your skin is um how your weight is how your body type is all these things this is going to control and you choose to save a couple dollars oh man i think i'll save a couple dollars here this is your body This is you you're talking about. Maybe spend the extra there and save the money somewhere else, like on some ridiculous thing that you're spending it on, like some app or something that you forgot to turn off the setting that you're spending $10 to $20 a month because you signed up for something. Cancel that thing 
and spend it on the organics, which is your body and your whole being. I don't know why people want to save money on food. Now I get the bodyguard says that he actually hunts his own food. Good for you. Good for you. That'd be better because um, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, only bummer is the wild animals are probably eating all the crap that every. That's the only thing is you know now there's so much crap out there that the wild animals start eating all the crap as well. You know, like I feel bad for these pigeons get so fat because they eat the gluten. And the sugar. We feed them bird seed. They love that. But when there isn't that, you know, they go for the human options. Um, and so the birds get fat. And, they, and then they can't fly. They're so awkward, poor things. People make fun of the pigeons. When they're not fat, they fly beautifully. It's when they get too fat. And that's because we're feeding them all this crap food, you know. Poor things scrounge and they eat such garbage. Um, they're so sweet. The pigeons are the sweetest most intelligent animals, and people don't realize that. We had the most amazing opportunity. We One of these days, we'll get some of this footage out of watching a baby squab, which is a baby pigeon, they call them squabs, be born and be taken care of by the parents in our last apartment. We fed them, and we got oh. It's a really amazing experience because you barely get to see baby squabs. And we have hours upon hours of footage of this baby squab as the parents because we were the ones solely feeding the parents. We were giving them we were giving them organic almonds. They loved organic almonds. It was the funniest thing. The pigeons went nuts for those organic almonds, but they got too expensive. We had to switch back to bird seed because feeding the pigeons organic almonds got a little tight on our budget. But, uh, they loved it, and they fed that little uh, squab with organic almonds. And it was the sweetest thing. We got to watch them completely grow up. And then they wanted to kill the pigeons at the apartments where we live. Because did you know it is illegal to feed pigeons in Las Vegas? But it's legal to kill them. So what we were doing was illegal, feeding the pigeons some almonds. And the landlord, or the manager, she was talking to this guy. He came over one day, and we're like, what are you doing? He was looking at because we were watching because the nest was there. The nest was there with the baby. And he came, and he and we said, what are you doing? Because he's, you know, looking as we've been watching. He said, so, oh, I'm going to kill all those pigeons today. And I said, what? So, yeah, your management uh, hired me to kill all those pigeons today. And I freaked the fuck out. And I ran to the front desk and I, I, I you know, argued with them. And, and I tweeted TJ Lavin because he's a local celeb. And I went nuts and, and I tweeted Fonte, everyone. And Michael vegans. Fonte. And, and we tried to get the pigeons out of there. I was like, get, get your baby, get out of here, get out of here. But they wouldn't leave because they were so comfortable. We had made a nice hope for them. Feeding them almonds, they weren't going nowhere. And I freaked out. And I freaked out. And um, the managers then said they're just going to put spikes everywhere. And they decided not to kill all the pigeons. But they installed spikes so the pigeons can't have a nice place to stay anymore. So, like, because they were living on the... They were living above the laundry room, and that bothered them that they had a nest up there. People are ridiculous. But I lost my mind on that one, I because we had witnessed the baby being born and everything. We watched it come out of the egg and everything. And I almost lost my goddamn mind. And that's the kind of stuff people do here in Vegas. And then they make it illegal to be homeless. We used to give so much money to the homeless people because a lot of them live behind us. Um, and we would... Weekly, that? weekly, we would go give the, one of them at least. What was that program that you came up? With? I came up with the five dollars a day to like the homeless of, people instead of drinking coffee. You gave them a challenge. Yeah, to I quit said to, to eat and not even to just quit that. I said cut out one cup of coffee and use that five dollars and give it to someone. Standing and that was my five, my five dollar a day um, one cup of coffee challenge. If you could give up all coffee was the ultimate challenge. But I said even one cup, which is around five dollars. You know, if you go to Starbucks, even more now. You know, it's, uh, it's even more than five for most of those drinks. But I said, and help someone. And what we would do is we helped the homeless. We lived right by the train tracks, and all of these homeless people were out there. And we brought them food and money and supplies uh, every time we got a chance. And we gave them money. People, oh, don't give them money. They'll buy drugs. Who gives a shit? They are homeless. Let them do whatever they want. Are you kidding me? It is hard being homeless. A lot of them are veterans. Uh, I mean, most of them are like veterans that served in the war. Let them do their drugs or alcohol. Are you kidding me? People are so arrogant. Oh, you can't give $5 because you don't want them to go buy some beer? Get the 
fuck out of here. Oh my, so one time we were walking when we first moved here, we used to live downtown, which is, it, it, it's a little rough downtown, like, um, you know, they're, they're, they fixed it up a lot when we first got here, it was pretty, pretty rough. And, you know, you'd walk by a lot of, a lot of homeless people, and there's one man we'd see all the time, he was in a wheelchair. And, um, he always would, you know, have uh, about like one beer and, you know, be trying to get some more. So this man, he had his one beer because a lot of these alcoholics, um, okay, I don't know if you guys know, when you become an alcoholic and when you need beer, it is serious. I got to that level and it is not a joke. It is the worst feeling you could ever fear in your whole, uh, feel in your whole life when you are addicted to alcohol and you need alcohol. It is the most excruciating pain. So give them their goddamn beer. My God, who the fuck do you think you are to be that arrogant to say, oh, well, they should get a job. Well, for one thing, they couldn't get one right now and no one can. So... There's going to be a lot more homeless people, so get off your fucking arrogant asses. I can't believe that when people go, or they go, so this is my story. So this man comes up. He's got his one little beer. Okay, he's sitting there. He's so happy. He's got his one beer, which will probably get him through the night. What I was going to say is when you become that big of an alcoholic, sometimes just one beer will be enough. That's all they need, but that will make them be able to sleep through the night. And Without it, they can't sleep, and it's excruciating pain. You get the shakes. You get the cold sweats. Awful. You can't sleep. It's a miserable. And one beer for some alcoholics can be enough because it's just that's just how their body has adapted. So this guy has his one beer. It's late night. It's about midnight, and we're walking home. And this gentleman and his son have their leftovers. Like, who knows what's in it? Leftover food, you know. Great. Thanks for your leftovers. Hand it to the man. Drops his beer on the ground. And the guy goes, "What? What the hell, man?" I don't want your leftover. That was my only beer. He goes, oh, excuse me. I thought, you know, food would be more important than drinking. And then walked away. And the guy's like, fucking A. My only goddamn beer. And he gives me his fucking leftovers. So we went and bought him some beer. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah. Was, I mean, it was just a funny yeah. scene. But then the guy's like, oh, you need food more than beer. What the fuck do you know what that guy needs? He needed that beer. We bought him beer. Yeah, who is he to say? Who is he to say? He didn't want your leftover the thing, food that, you'd been eating. That's the thing is that the society we live in right now with these millennials, they're all coming up. They all still live at home. I mean, mentally, even though they don't live at home. But then they think they know what everyone needs. Yeah. And they think, oh, if you just don't give homeless people money, then they'll just uh, get off their ass and get a job. For one thing, most of these people cannot get a job. Most of them have mental problems. There's no job for them. A lot of them are even born into homelessness. We met this kid at the last place. He was, how old is he now? I think he was 21 or 22. But he had been homeless his whole life. His mother was homeless. He was born homeless. He has just been homeless. I, did, I thought, wow, he's a super intelligent kid, too. He educated himself somehow. I don't know. I think he reads or I don't even know. Very, very smart. Um, and, I mean, he can't even go get a job because he has, he has, he has, for jobs, you need the clothes. You need to be clean. You need to have uh, usually an address, a phone number they can contact you. Uh, you need references, you need job history, you need education. This kid has nothing. He's been homeless his whole life with his mother. Super brilliant kid. You're not going to give him $5? I don't even think he did drugs or anything. But people would think he did just because he was homeless. That's crazy. Crazy. We met a lot of people like that. Oh, yeah, we met Steve and Catherine. They were, uh, we oh, helped Steve and Catherine. Yeah, uh, those are nice people, actually. Very nice people. Very they had been people. homeless for seven years. They, at one point, Clark County had helped the uh, homeless. And they had provided um, assistance for some of these people. And then one day they decided they didn't want to do that anymore. And they kicked them all out to the street. They were in a, an assisted uh, a home, you know, where the, the assistance from the like a model. One day, Nevada changed all those laws, kicked out all the uh, people out of the mental institutions, kicked out all the people that were getting the funding. So Steve and Catherine had been homeless ever since then. Um, and they lived in a tunnel. But what would happen is when the floods here, they get flooded out. And a lot of people died. So they 
who were fortunate to where they would never die because they were set up, but what would happen is it would destroy their home every time. Because they had this, they had set up the nicest little home. We have pictures of it. Because they were so good. We went over there all the time. And say hi to them. We'd bring them food, supplies, and money. We'd always bring all of the food. We would never not bring money either. Because, you know what? What everyone needs is money. And when we just go, no, 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 food. Food too. We'd bring that too. Because they were very skinny. And, you know, they did spend a lot on you know, whatever the drug of choice was. So we would bring food too so that, you know, they could have that as well. But we would bring them money because I think they have every right to do whatever they want. For one thing, their life is very hard. And if whatever drug they choose, whether it be heroin or alcohol, if that helps them sleep at night when they live outside in the cold, I think they should be able to do that. I think they have every right. Most of them have uh, um, health problems, like uh, uh, mental problems. They've served in wars, or, most or, of them. Or, or, this is the United States, and if a person chooses to live a certain lifestyle, who are we to say? Yeah, there, how can we say someone can't be homeless? This is a free country. How can we say that land, that people cannot just live on it? I don't care. People try to say they own We're land. In a desert. We're For in one thing, how the fuck can you really think you own land? You do not. You think you do because you have a piece of paper saying you own that. You don't own the earth. You do not own the earth. You should be thankful that someone even let you have the opportunity to think you own that little piece of plat that you have, whatever it be your house or whatever it is. But you better realize you you don't really own it because guess what? Right now you're realizing if you don't pay, you don't own that thing. Also, you realize if some natural disaster came in, bye bye house. You don't really own that stuff that you think like and the level you think you do. You know what I mean? The universe owns the universe and owns Earth. And when we think we can say, I own this so this person can't sit here or lay here or sleep here, that is not okay with the universe. Because the universe goes, you do not own that. So you think you do? Well, guess what? Your whole city is going to be shut down now. So I think this is all karma. So now you say, well, you said the Democrats are doing it. Yeah, the Democrats are doing it, but they're sabotaging themselves in the process to try to do their agenda, which I think at the end of the day, I don't think a Democrat's going to win. So I think this whole thing is going to destroy our economy, and then Trump's still going to win. And then the Democrats are just going to be sitting there with their thumbs up their asses, and they destroyed their states for no reason. So, But all of us are going to suffer more than them because they have millions of dollars. So they don't really care. But they're just going to look like buffoons. Well, they had to find what Biden had, what the Democrats had to find. They quickly, I'm sure you know how it works behind the scenes. It's like, virus, okay, here's what's going to happen, okay? Now, how can we take advantage of this? Yeah, they take advantage of an already situation. That's why people go, oh, they didn't, there's a virus. Yeah, there was a virus, a normal flu virus. They're just acting like it's more serious. Than that. That's the bottom line. That is all that's happening. It is a normal flu virus that people are acting like it's more serious than that. That is all it is. That is, I can sum up my entire blog with that. It is a normal flu virus that people are acting like is more serious than a normal and, and flu virus. Here's, here's the funny thing. This is why it's, it's, it's entertaining to us. is because Joe Biden was probably dangling all sorts of positions. When, he, like, when I'm president, mm -hmm. but how am I going to be president? We've got to use you to take down Trump's supporters. Right. I was saying that yesterday. So, so Steve Sisolak is such yeah. a wannabe. See, these, because the governors that are uh, doing the most, like, the longest shutdowns and stuff are the Democratic governors, like the governor in California, the governor here in Nevada, and in New York, which are all Democratic states. Well, what we firmly believe is that those governors are trying to fast track to be, you know, vice president because they're like, oh, let me uh, lick that. And even if not be vice president, you always want to be on the side of the president if he's going to become president, right? So they're trying to, you know, appease the Democrats and do, oh, I helped, I helped uh, get you in office, you know, remember me when you're making these decisions. And that's what they all do is they all, you know, do all these side deals and stuff. Um, you guys should watch the show Billions. Um, that's a really good show for seeing a lot of the like stuff that actually occurs with our legal system and um, 
yeah, the stock market and with the politicians. That show is a great example. And you say, oh, well, that's a fictional show. But no, they're showing things that really occur in the sense of maybe not to that we're exact so detail. But it's those things occur very, very similar. What they're showing is what occurs. And what they keep showing over and over is all the politicians are bought off. Um, on on every level because it's they're bought off in the sense of even if it's just deal like hey can you do this for me and then I'll do this for you that's still being bought off by someone because whether it's money or not because it's quid pro quo yeah and everything is like let me you know rub your back you rub mine and you know and oh and, you know don't do this because this will hurt me but we'll do this for you guys and agenda you know all 21. agenda and um people say um, conspiracy theory as Jedi Rich keeps saying a conspiracy is only two people coming together and having a plan well of course we have that with our government I mean what does so they did conspire with this virus even just meeting together talking about the virus they conspired and they figured out a plan well they realized that the virus is not deadly because we see the facts. Everyone can look at the facts. You say, why can you say it's not deadly? The facts say it's not deadly. More people are recovering, substantially more, as in hundreds of thousands are recovering in the U.S. And only, I don't know the new number today, but it's less than 20,000 have died, which the normal flu virus kills 50,000 a year. So if you were tracking the normal flu virus, you would be seeing higher numbers than this one. So we've been duped, you guys. And we're losing our jobs for no reason. For a normal flu virus, we could have gone about our merry way the same way we were, and a couple people would have got it, as they always do. Maybe 50,000, maybe less. Dr. Drew seemed to think this one was going to only be 20,000 for the whole time. I don't know where he came up with that, but that was his number. Um, but right now we're seeing it's less than 20,000 right now, so he's being his numbers are right on, right on track. But here's the thing. Now, who knows what we have done to society? So even if there was a virus that was killing a lot of people, we have done more damage by shutting down society now, at this point, than what the virus would have ever done. Because now people are out of work. People are going to lose their homes. People are going to lose their small businesses. People are getting depressed. I heard people are already committing suicide during this time. We've had people ODing because they're depressed and they're stuck at home. So they're drinking too much and taking pills. And those are a real bad combination, like I said, Alcohol and the strong pills are what most people OD on. Very few people. People think people OD on Coke. You can only OD on Coke if alcohol is involved. And you'd be ODing on the alcohol is what you'd be ODing on. Because you Coke, you really can't OD on. I mean, you can do so much Coke, you can't OD. All it happens is you're just up for days. <laughs> it's not an OD thing. It's the combo. It's generally the things that are uppers and downers are what cause problems because when you're so high and then go so low because it's a problem where your heart rate's just getting all out of whack, you know. You're causing, like I said, anytime when you're causing your body a lot up and then is when you're going to have more problems. And that's when most people die is when they, that's when you'll hear people dying from Coke because they mix it with something else. A lot of times heroin and Coke or alcohol and Coke. Usually alcohol and coke. Very few people do coke without alcohol. I don't know if you guys know that. Uh, it's very hard to do coke without alcohol because it's so intense and it makes you shake and, you, you know, it's like, it'd be like well, your heart's beating really, really fast. So alcohol brings it down. That's why most people combine those. But that can become very deadly because alcohol is very deadly. Alcohol is poison. So that's why I get upset when people make such a big deal about drugs because a lot of the drugs, the ones that are the worst are the legal ones, the pharmaceuticals. And those, we don't even make a big deal. We're starting to now more and more because so many kids are ODing. But those have always been more destructive than any street drug. Um, pharmaceuticals are so intense. So we did uh, pills for a second, and that was the worst thing. Oh, my gosh. We did. Uh, we were taking Vicodin for a minute, and then uh, a little bit of the oxys. This was um, in, like, 2013. 
And man, that is not a pleasant life. Um, we did it because Jedi Rich had to have some teeth pulled. And then he started taking the Vicodins, and then I all wanted to try it with him because I was all about doing anything that got me, like, anything. You know what I mean? Like, I would take any kind of pill, any kind of anything. Uh, I just wanted to feel anything, you know what I mean? I was just so um, messed up because this is after my mom died. I just, if you could give me a substance, I would take it. So I was bulimic. I was drunk. I was... So we tried the pills, and man, that is not a good existence. Uh, and um, it takes a long time to get better after them, too, because that's why most people are way sicker after. So, like, a lot of people will take them when they've been sick for, like, a pain like I said, every time it's a teeth pulled. So we took them. And then, um, but then they continue to take them, and that's how people get addicted to these. And um, to get off of them is very hard. And some people die getting off of pharmaceutical pills that's how strong they are the withdrawal can kill you if you don't come off of it like um uh, slowly they actually have to monitor those are the most serious things like when people go into rehab is the ones that are doing pharmaceutical drugs like the oxys um and um but a lot of the street drugs are not really that bad like um okay the ones that are man-made are always going to be bad like meth is man-made but ones like um, Coke, people, it's funny, they think it's so bad. It's not really. Um, it's the when you mix it with things. It's the same. And then weed is not even a drug, but people consider that a drug. So anything from Earth is not all that bad. It's that when we change it, when we change its form, when we uh, uh, create things. So, like, any food that you can get from this Earth is pretty good for you. Now, there's still a moderation, like I said, Fruit, you would always want to do in moderation. And here's the theory of fruit and veggies. If you get confused, why can't I just eat a lot of fruit and veggies? They're from Earth. Well, they're really high in sugar. But here's why you can't eat a lot. Because you have to imagine Earth as if before we had all of the uh, available sources we have now. So imagine you're on Earth back in the day when you only had access to certain fruits and you had to pick them yourself or go find them. That's how you should view fruits and nuts and things is the access you would have in the wild. So you would only get maybe a handful of berries, maybe an apple once in a while, maybe depending on where you are in the tropics, you might have tropical fruit. But you would not have the access that we have now. Oh, can you do that in the middle of the? Does that work? I think so. Or does it mess up when it flips? I'm going to check. Okay, I don't remember with Periscope. Um, but so people eat copious amounts of fruit now. You wouldn't have the access to that back in the day. So that's what you need to think when you're thinking of what to eat is if I was in the wild, would I be able to eat this the way I'm eating it? And if the answer is no, then those are the things you want to avoid. So if it's something where they had to process it, they had to smash it, they had to like, so like I was saying the other day, almond butter. I found is not good because you can get so much so fast, like so much fat, so much sugar, because you can take a, you know, a big old mouthful, which in the wild, you wouldn't be able to get that much almond butter. You'd have to squish a lot of almonds and find all those almonds, you know what I mean? Where now you can spoonfuls of almond butter. So when you're thinking of what to eat is think of, would I have access to this in the wild? And how much access would I have to it? And that's how much you should eat of it. So what you would have access to in the wild is animals. And you would eat the animals that were available to you. Um, and some places would have some, some fruit, but some places don't even have fruit. So think like that, and that's a good rule of thumb. You go, okay, what, like, would my great, 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 way back ancestors, like I have a Native American ancestor, uh, my great great grandma was Native American from California. She's a Native Californian. Um, I don't know what tribe because it's it's all a mess with my family history. You know, another time, but um, I could ask my dad, but I just never did because it it was my grandpa was very racist and he disowned his mother and it was this crazy thing which I'm very mad about now because I'm I think it's so cool that I have a Native American relative, but my grandpa was an asshole. My great grandpa. Anyways, um, so think of what your ancestors would have ate, and that is how you can know 
how much you should eat, you know, in the sense of like, so with fruit, you go, okay, well, what would be available? I'd only be able to get a little bit of fruit. And so then that's how much fruit you can eat. Now, and you wouldn't have access to putting fruit in smoothies. And that's what I was talking about the other day is the problem with beverages is beverages go right into your system immediately like just straight energy you know it's like right into your bloodstream there's no processes needed to um you know break it down or anything so you're not using any energy and then you're getting all of that sugar fat whatever it may be calories and anything that you don't use right then like you don't burn off right then stored to fat so when you do that drink let's say you take a swig of orange juice in the morning or a smoothie. If you don't immediately burn off all of that, what you just drank, you're going to store it all as fat immediately. That's how that happens. Because see, with other things, when you have to eat them, chew them, smell them, digest them, all of that is a process that takes time and burns calories. It's not so ours. You don't store all of that as fat. But beverages, right in your bloodstream, the sugar, instant sugar, um, and instant calories, instant whatever. That's why you feel an instant rush. But then right away, you're going to feel tired. And this is what I also say what happens when you do a lot of sugar, um, your body produces more insulin. And insulin tells your body to store fat. So every time you're doing sugary things or the artificial things or the caffeine, you're telling your body to produce insulin, which then tells your body to store fat, which also tells your body to go into hibernation, tells your body to go into depressed mode, all of the above. And we wonder why so many people are getting depressed. Because all of the substances they're taking in are telling them to relax, be depressed, store fat, don't do anything, hibernate like a bear. And every time they're taking the thing to try to give themselves energy again, their body says, relax, store fat, hibernate like a bear, sit on the couch, don't do anything. You go, more coffee, more sugar, wake me up, relax, store fat. I mean, do you see where it's just this constant battle? And caffeine, you say, well, how does caffeine do that? Because that's not sugar. Caffeine does it because caffeine numbs all of your hormones and your senses. So what happens when you numb your senses is they stop producing as much. So in particular, your insulin hormone stops producing as much insulin. So then your blood sugar rises. So your body goes, oh, I need to produce more insulin. So it produces more insulin, even though you have that other hormone is just kind of chilling. So when it stops having the caffeine <laughs> overdose or whatever it gets, what about, caffeine what about high, tea? it's caffeine, period. Unfortunately, it, nothing but water <laughs> is really going to help you. Tea is not okay because everything that they make, like, uh, unless you can find, and, and prove me wrong, you can find something, but anything I've ever found at the store has some sort of caffeine, even if it's caffeine-free. I mean, caffeine-free still has a little bit of caffeine. Um, so if you can find one and, and, it's, and you know for sure, but I'll tell you what, if you cut out caffeine... And then try a caffeine-free thing. You will see it has caffeine. I get you think it doesn't because you're like, oh, it doesn't because you're used to having caffeine. Cut out caffeine and for a while. And then try a caffeine-free tea and see if you think there's caffeine in there. And you will be amazed. You'll be bouncing off the ceilings with caffeine-free tea. It's insane. I was like, what? Because I wanted to do because that's what we did first. We first switched to tea, and I wanted, I wanted to keep doing tea because I didn't want to only drink water. But then I realized there is caffeine in caffeine free, and um, then we did the uh, I think it's called maca tea. That's got a lot of caffeine. That one, man, we did that for a while. That was when before we were cutting out caffeine. That was when first we had switched from coffee to tea. We went to the uh, maca tea. I think it's called. I think it's maca. I could be wrong with the name. I can't remember now. It's been a while. Um, oh, it's been two years now since I've had caffeine. Uh, uh, March. 24, 2018, I only remember that because it was on my birthday. We had tea was what we were having because we'd already cut out the coffee 
and we were having the caffeine-free tea. We had even gotten to that, but I was still bouncing off the ceilings with caffeine-free tea. And that's what I cut out on my birthday in 2018. And that's the last time I've drank a beverage other than water. I've not drank any beverage other than water since uh, March 24, 2018. And um, every day that I drink more water, I feel better. And I don't crave any other um, substances anymore where I thought, you know, I used to not like water. But I tell you what, sparkling water makes a big difference. That does really help because you get some bubbles and you get those minerals. Um, Because just drinking spring water all the time can sometimes get a little bit old. So if you do a little bit of that sparkle, that makes all the difference in the world. But don't do the flavors. You cannot do the flavors because then you're going to have the problems again because the artificial flavoring does the same problem. You're going to produce insulin because your body's going to think it's um, sugar, even though uh, it doesn't have the calories, but it tastes sweet. So your body will produce insulin because it thinks it got sugar. So you want to avoid those. So you know what I'm talking about, like the ones that say lime or lemon. Don't do those. Do the no flavor sparkling water. Um, that's what we do. Oh, I'm so excited today. I, was, I think I was telling you guys in the beginning, I finally got a Whole Foods order with Gerald Sanders. Oh, Richard, did my Gerald Sanders arrive yet? Oh, soon. They're coming soon, you guys. I couldn't believe it. I got a window. So, like, you have to just keep trying. There's not windows available for delivery, you know, for the stores. And you just have to keep trying, keep trying. And you're like, oh, you get so annoyed. You're like, come on. It's just not. Because sometimes it never works, too. So you could try all day and then it doesn't work. So you're like, do I want to keep trying? No, I and uh, I did this morning. I just kept doing it. I kept doing it. And I got a window. And I'm so happy because I haven't had those, like, all month. And they have really great minerals. So I really miss them. Um, like, the, they have more mineral. They have a very high mineral content where some sparkling waters have low mineral contents. Like, Perrier, Perrier's have very low mineral content. Gerald Sanders have high mineral content. Uh, Pellegrino's are eh, in there. Um, the Italian sparkling waters from um, Whole Foods. What, about, what about natural sugar? No, 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 no. Hey, if you're Chinko Stinko, do you remember Chinko Stinko? Yeah, I do remember. Yeah, from the cave. Hey, hey, man. So he was part of when we lived in the cave. For all of you new people, see, there's a lot of people that probably don't believe us, but some of y'all know, and you watched us, and that's our. You see, our our scope is gone because we lost that account. I'm sure they have the video. It exists somewhere. Like, I'm sure Periscope, unless they probably dump that data. But I don't, I don't know if they keep their data. But somewhere there is uh, countless hours of us living in a cave. And we scoped it all. And we thought we would have it. But then they took down our account. Um, but we lived in a cave for three and a half months from uh, November 2017 to March. No, to February 2018. So right into living in the cave is when we, we were drinking a bunch of coffee and then right after, so that next month was when we discovered cutting out coffee too, right after living in the cave. We discovered, I discovered all the diet stuff, most of it living in the cave. Like we knew about organics, but we rediscovered how important they were living in the cave because we tried other things since we were on short pennies. So we would try non-organic things and I kept getting very sick and people will know that watch as I got, I was, I got like two kidney infections in like the two months, uh, or the, uh, sorry, within two months, uh, the first two months I had kidney infections. And then Jenna Rich, the last month, he had hurt his arm. Um, see, we were, <laughs> we lived in a cave. It was, you had to hike up about a mile at the top of this mountain here, out, just on the outskirts of the city here. Um, and you hiked up and then there was a cave at the top of the hill that we put a tent in there. Um, so it was like a hole, and, you know, and there's rocks, and then we put the tent. And we had to have an air mattress because it was on rocks. But unfortunately, our air mattress would pop all the time. You go, yeah, well, you put it on rocks. Yeah, but uh, we it was like a really sturdy air mattress, so it would last for a while, but it would eventually pop, which was costing us a fortune because they were like $40, and we didn't have that much money. So we had to go through like, we went through about like six air mattresses. And we'd have to carry them up the hill, too. They were so heavy. We'd get them from Walmart. And we're like, okay, finally the last night is when we were like, we're done. So I had a gold necklace that we pawned, and we got a place at a Seagull Suites. We were like, because what happened was Jedi Rich um, fell one day. He was cooking. He did all the cooking back then. We had cook on a Coleman. It was pretty fun. You guys know. Chico Stico knows. What is it, Chico Stico? I always say the name. Um, he cooked on a Coleman, and he fell on the rocks, and his elbow 
got all infected because we were living in a cave. I tried to clean it up. We had some hydrogen peroxide, and I had some Band-Aids and stuff because we'd go get it at the store. But uh, we were living outside, so it got really infected. And it blew up like it got swollen. And he got really, really sick. And I was having to do all of the uh, taking care of everything, like going and getting going and getting the supplies and then cooking and stuff. And he was just sleeping in the tent, and it was so sick. And it was really cold. It was really, really cold. And so we were using um, just our little propane. Um, it was a, a, a lamp for light. We were using that for heat because it was so cold because it was in um, February. And February actually gets really cold here in Vegas. It actually snowed the next year at the same time. Or... Is that the same year? Is that the same year? What year? Oh, yeah, it was 2019. I think that snowed. Yeah, the next year, yeah. It's, um, but that one night, his arm was so swollen, and we were like, man, I don't know what we're going to do. We wanted to take him to the hospital or something. And then the darn air mattress popped in the middle of the night. It was like, it was like 10 p.m. And we're like, we can't do this because he was so sick and he couldn't sleep on the rocks. We'd already done that a couple of nights. We slept on the rocks and now I tell you what, <laughs> worst. I mean, cause these were like jagged rocks, like rocks, like this size rocks, you know? All and so uh, we had a necklace that I had been wearing as like a backup. I had one gold necklace. And so we were able, there was one pawn shop that was open um, till 11 PM. So we packed up everything that we could that night uh, that we could put on our backs, and we, uh, as quickly as we could, like, as quickly as we could, we grabbed everything that we could, and, um, then we, uh, got as quickly as we could to the pawn shop, we're like, please make it in time, we had to Uber, and our Uber was taking over, we're like, oh, please make it in time, because he was so sick, and then, uh, we were able to pawn the necklace, and then we got a hotel for a couple days, and then we got, um, we moved into one of these weeklies, but, uh, a, a lot of people watched us in the cave for those three and a half months, and we had it all documented, and unfortunately, no, we've lost all of that. We, ha we have a little bit of our own stuff, but we did more on Periscope than anything because we just scoped all day long. And we would charge our batteries. We, used, we had our phones. Um, we only had phones then. We didn't have, like, the iPads. And we just each had a phone. I had an iPhone 7. Jarvis had an iPhone 7 as well. And we would charge them at the, the gas station. We had one of those little, we still have it, it as one of those backup battery things. You can plug it in. So we charge up the backup battery and we charge up our phones and we even had wa our Apple Watches that we charge them up at the gas station, which was about two miles away. We'd go down there every day. There's a jack in the box and they had little outlets at the, and that's how we uh, lived and we periscoped the whole thing. And so there's, some people have been around during that whole time, and they thought we were insane. It was we were living in a cave <laughs> in Las Vegas, um, and it, we did it right after the Mandalay Bay incident because uh, that really upset us, and we did not. We were like, "How is everyone acting like this is okay?" Because Vegas was like, you know, didn't even want to. They didn't really want to even make a big deal about because they don't like negative news here. So it was like, "Oh, don't talk about the tragedy ever," you know. Don't want to. You don't want to scare any tourists away. And we were like, 58 people just died in our backyard because we lived. Where we lived when that happened, we could see Mandalay Bay from our apartment. Like, it was, we were the closest you could be to Mandalay Bay of any, any um, uh, residential uh, living. We, we were, because we were in a, a weekly that was right behind Mandalay Bay, basically. Like, Jerry Rich took photos every single day of Mandalay Bay out, out our bedroom window. And so, and we saw, um, like, we were right in that flight plan. We'd see all the planes coming in right there um, the day and we'd watch them. But that's also when we documented the UFOs that no one believes, you know, not very many people believe. We all want to go check that out on our website, the UFOs at Mandalay. So what happened is Jedi Rich was always taking videos Every night, a Mandalay Bay and the Luxor and the light, because the light would turn off at certain times, and they would do different lights and things, and he was taking moon photos and all kinds of things. He was always outside, and this one night, he saw all of these lights that were going in a formation, just red lights, uh, and it was not like the regular place because we watched the flights every day, and it's on our uh, on our website go check it out check it out for yourselves but that's when we were like oh there's more to this world than we realize there are other beings out there 
Um, we are not alone. And you know, uh, Trump started a space force because we know there's other stuff out there. If we think Earth is the only beings in the whole universe and multiverse, you're crazy. But uh, so all of that happened. Then we went to the cave. Then we came back, and now we just do our thing. And um, people just think we're nuts. <laughs> and you can think that. But you know what? All we do is just enjoy ourselves every day, and we try to make the world a better place. That we don't like the injustices that occur every day. And that's why we speak out against those, and that's why people don't like us. We, you know, for years now, we've been trying to, I don't know, just get some love on social media, and we get, for so long, we've been getting hate. I mean, just hate, 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 just no love. I mean, it's like, we say, heart the art, you know, give someone a heart. I mean, why do people hold out on a free heart on things, you know, like, especially on Twitter, say, oh, I don't want to heart something, oh, God forbid I heart someone's art. So we we were fighting with that for years, and then we just said, forget it. We're just going to do our thing, not worry about it, on, um, and not worry about the views, because uh, not, not worry about how many people see it, just because we're not going to kowtow to what people want, in the sense of I'm not going to say, you know, I see everyone's getting views when they do this, so I'm going to do that. That's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue to speak what I believe is true, or what I feel, and if people don't like that, that's okay with me. But I'm not going to stop speaking how I feel, even if I get more hate than love. And that's what I'm okay with now. I've, I've learned to accept But it was hard for me at first because no one likes people to say nasty things to them. It don't matter if you're confident or not. It don't matter if you, you know, people go, are you, are you, why you worry, you're confident. It don't matter. It still can hurt. Uh, and I choose to sometimes not look at a lot of this stuff, you know, anymore. Like, I, I you know, I don't watch my whole scopes because I know there's a lot of nasty comments to come in but I've been I hearing from Jai Richard a lot of nice comments are coming in so that's good I'll look at it a little bit but it never fails when I look at it I'll happen to see the comments that come in that are just nasty I'm like oh you know you turn on for a couple minutes and you have to oh <laughs> darn it so I mean it just gets in your head because people will just say rude things you know and even if you're confident it's still just kind of like why do people have to be mean so then that kind of upsets me but I'm getting more and more over that because I realize people are only mean because they're hurting themselves and they lash out because they're hurting. And they generally lash out out of jealousy. And jealousy usually comes out of because you're not getting what you need. And so you feel other people are. And so it also comes out of greed. But it also can come out of just because people are not getting what they need. Like some people, you know, don't feel satisfied in life. They don't have a loved one. They don't like their job, they don't like their kids, they don't like their loved one, they are single, whatever the reason is um, that they're unhappy, so then they get jealous of people that are happy, because they want to be happy at the end of the day, I mean, everyone wants to be happy at the end of the day, so jealousy only comes out of like, how come you're happy and I'm not, but it also can come out of greed, because sometimes, just because someone else gets something doesn't mean you should be entitled to it. That's not the way the world is, unfortunately. Not everyone gets the same thing. I personally think it'd be nice if we all had the same. I'm more for a community thing. I'm more for, if anything, a more communist state. People uh, to look at the bad aspects of communism, and I'm not saying those aspects were like control of the government, but I'm saying the more where people have a community. And with communism, you know, there's more of a collective, like socialism, but there's a lot of negative aspects of most communist countries. So I'm not saying that, but I'm saying where there's more uh, equal distribution of wealth instead of some people being billionaires and other people having nothing. Some people having to work five jobs to, to provide for their family while other people are literally flushing it down the toilet. I mean, and they definitely are if they're being bulimic. F eating and throwing up food is so expensive and then it's so wasteful because other people... Oh, okay, so imagine this. You know how there's been this pandemic of everyone going to the store? Well, 
the bulimics really had to stock up. So that's also part of the pandemic is we don't realize there's a huge portion of bulimic people in the world right now because the food has gotten so bad that people have had to resort to bulimia to lose weight because they don't want to be fat. And I know that's what I did. And especially in the celebrity status, there's a huge portion of bulimic people. And the problem with bulimia is it's greedy at the end of the day, and it's very bad for you. You'll get very sick. Uh, I did. I almost died. Um, and it's just not a way to live. I mean, you think, oh, that's great because you can eat whatever you want to throw out, but it's a constant addiction and struggle every day, and all you're thinking about is food, and that's not a way to live. Now I barely think about food. I forget to cook. Jedi Rich has to tell me, I'm hungry. Can you cook? I'm like, oh, yeah, I totally forgot. Oh, my gosh. When I spent my entire existence thinking about everything, like what I ate, what I'm going to eat next, what I just ate and need to throw up, what I just ate and need to somehow work out, what I just ate and need to take laxatives for, what I just ate and now need to just make my feel, make myself feel bad because I ate that, or like everything, or what I'm going to eat next, or how many calories is that, or oh, is that going to make me fat, or I mean, constant, all day long for my entire life until now, until I discovered eating organic meat meat greens what we eat exactly is organic beef organic greens and organic garlic and water just different variations of that so with the beef we might have stew meat we might have organic bones we might have organic steak but we generally have organic ground beef and we make burgers because that's the cheapest that's what we eat the most of but in that luxury time we'll get steak uh, when it's available, we'll get organic bones. When it's available, we'll get organic stew. But those are also very expensive. Um, uh, organic stew meat can get very expensive. So the cheapest is, of course, the ground beef. So we eat burgers. And we I make burgers for every meal. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner is burgers at the Light Teller house here. Um, and you'd think that you'd get sick of it, but you crave it every single meal. I mean, Jedi Rich tells me every meal that it's better than the last one. And that's how we feel. I mean, it's honest. You're like, oh, so delicious because it's so satisfying. When food is satisfying, it is the most delicious food you'll ever eat. The food that is not satisfying will taste good for a second, but immediately you want more. So that is just, it's just this constant battle. So you're just, it's not fun. Whereas when you eat things like I'm telling you to eat, You'll eat it and you'll be like, I'm full, I'm not thinking about food, I'm not worried because guess what, I know that food that I'm eating will not make me fat. And that's a beautiful feeling. That's the best feeling to have. I know when I eat my beef that I could literally eat mine and Jedi Rich's portion, which I never would now because I don't need to, but I know that I would feel very full and I'd be very uncomfortable for about the rest of the day and tomorrow I'd feel fine and I'd be back to normal. That's how this food is. Because, like, even if you gorded yourself, you'd be full for, like, that day. But by the next day, I mean, that's how quick you just burn off the calories when you eat like this. It's just nothing. And I've done that before. I've overate on day. Like, oh, man. I like to say I stuff my shorts when I, like, ate too many burgers. Because um, I eat, I tend to eat two to three burgers at a meal. I like to eat two. But when I'm really hungry, hungry I'll eat three. But three, and these are small. They're, like, um... We make, um, like, sliders. They're like slider burgers, if that makes sense. So two, like, slider burgers. Um, and I'll eat three if I'm really hungry. But often when I eat three, I get really full. I'm like, oh, man, I'm stuffed. And I've never experienced being that full like that um, until I ate like this. Because always before, you would only feel full if you had literally gorded yourself to where you couldn't eat another thing you know what I mean and then with bulimia immediately after you throw up you're hungry again so that one you're just constantly hungry constantly 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 so that's why bulimia spends so much money because if you it's an all-day thing especially if you're not working so like right now bulimics are probably struggling because if they're not used to being home all day then they'll find that all they want to do is eat and throw up all day long like just constantly like, eat throw up eat throw up eat throw up and you, because what will happen is every time after they throw up they're immediately hungry again because they just got rid of all of their nutrients 
So they're now starving again. So it's just a constant battle. And that's why it's not something you want to get into because it's not something you can dabble. Um, you think you can. Everyone thinks they can dabble with bulimia. Like a lot of people will think, oh, um, I'll, I'll just try it. And then before long, they're doing it more and more and more because it's so hard to not do at first because you're like, oh, my gosh, I can eat anything. And all I have to do is throw up and I'm still thin. And at first, sometimes you can even have a pretty nice body because it takes a couple of years for your body to start to adjust. And what it'll start doing is start doing things that are unpleasant, like storing fat in places you don't want. Like in your stomach, in your thighs, a lot of times under your arms. Often um, people will get a puffy face. Either people will get really gaunt face or puffy face. That seems to be the... I got both. Like you get both during the time because I was believe 15 years. Sometimes I was very gaunt. Sometimes my face was all puffed up. Um, but the thing is right now, people are struggling. So the reason why I'm doing these blogs is I want to be able to help. If, if people are struggling with their weight, and I know people are, and if you're home and you don't know what to eat, choose meat, 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 meat. And if you can't do organics, do regular meat. It's still better than any other option. Meat is going to be your best option. It's the lowest carbs. Like the best thing for that you can eat with the lowest amount of carbs or sugar it would be animal meat. That's why the other protein options are not as good like the vegan options on top of other things, but one of their reasons why they're not good is because their ratio of carbs to fat to protein is not as good as with regular meat because with regular meat, it's um, high protein, basically zero carbs for m most meats, and then, um, you know, they have pretty high fat, a lot of them, but... Uh, with the vegan options, they have very high carb content with the protein. And that's why you end up gaining more weight because carbs are what really, really get people the sugar. Carbs are sugar. If you don't, it's the same thing. Some people get confused what carbs are versus sugar. Everything breaks down to sugar. Even meat ultimately breaks down, but it takes longer. That's why you want to use meat. It says sugar is what we use. But carbs are just more complex sugars, but it's still sugar. People think that they just need to look at the sugar content and not look at the carb content, or they think those are different, or they come up with these theories that complex carbs are so much better than the... No, it's all carbs, so you got to... I mean... Complex carbs are better than regular sugar. That is true, but the, you can't be eating a bunch of complex carbs. Is what I'm saying that you still got to keep your carbs. Though you want to have 60 percent. If you want to be thin, that's all I'm saying. If you want to be fat, do whatever you want. If you want to be thin, then listen to what I'm saying because I'm telling you, I'm thin by just diet. I do not go to the gym. I don't really do any exercise other than what you guys see here where I'm doing these videos, my modeling, and uh, a tad bit of nunchucks once in a while. And um, we walk a lot. But I don't do any kind of exercise. You guys see every time I do exercise, I'll, I'll treat it. I'll even, when I do push-ups, which is like once in a blue moon, I can do push-ups. I just don't do them very often. I stopped doing them because um, I found that I got too, I don't like how you get stocky as a girl <laughs> when you... Like, you're, I already have small boobs, and when I was doing push-ups too often, then I had, like, no boobs. So I stopped doing push-ups, but I can do push-ups. Um, not girl push-ups. I can do the real man push-ups. So um, I used to do them every day when, that's, when I was trying to. Cause see, we used to go to the gym, like, two hours a day uh, when we were doing other diets. And now, like I said, when you eat this way, you don't even have to go to the gym. It's great, and we're fit and healthy and and you, you lean up just by uh, eating right. So, what is the food that's your best option? Meat. Because the other options, like I was saying, have a higher carb ratio. And what you want is you want to get 60% from protein, 20%. This is your overall nutrition. 60% of the calories coming from protein. You want 20% from carbs and 20 from fat. So most things, if you're eating any kind of carb that you would think like, let's say you're eating rice, 
that's going to put you over your 20% real fast. So the carbs that we consume are only from organic greens. So kale and collard greens and garlic. Garlic you get some carbs from too. Um, those are the, our only means of carbohydrates. And then we eat meat. So when you're thinking carbs, think very low carbs. Don't be thinking, oh, I can have breads and stuff. That really should not even really be in your thought process anymore of ever eating bread. And you say, oh, I got this gluten-free. It's just going to be another problem down the road. Bread is not good for you. No, Wheat is not good for you. That's what gluten is. It's a wheat protein. It's a, it's a lot of things like oat and wheat protein, uh, Riley. And, um, but it's a wheat. Did I say, yeah, wheat and oat and bar- barley. But um, wheat is very bad for us, we're finding out. Very bad. It was never good. Like, it was never... Uh, we thought that it was going to be good because what happens is they try to... Meat was so expensive back in the 70s uh, that they made the food pyramid and they said that you should have more carbs because that was cheaper for people. And they didn't realize all of the health things that were going to come later. But they thought maybe you didn't need as much meat. And everyone was thinking that cholesterol was coming from the meat and that they were um, having heart attacks due to the red meat, which is absolutely not the case. Um, for one thing, there's good and bad cholesterol, and you get good cholesterol from meat. Um, the bad cholesterol comes from other things, like the other foods that you're it's eating. It's 9.30. Um, especially things like dairy is not good, um, and the gluten and all that stuff. So um, wheat in no way is healthy for us. So um, there's really no benefits from wheat. So the more you realize... I cut out all those things like oatmeal, um, breads, any of those things that are like, that's all the same. Gluten is made of those things. It's made from oat and wheat and barley and uh, a couple of other ones. So if you want to avoid gluten, you got to avoid the source, which is the wheats and stuff. So you have to not eat those, period. Um, Because it's not just the gluten, that's the problem. That's why people have wheat allergies, period. It's the wheat, it's not just the gluten. But now the gluten is even worse because what they've done is they've made it such a, like, a doughy consistency that it's even harder for your body. It almost, like, just glues to your intestines and stuff. It's so, it's not good. You don't ever want to, think about when you're eating something of what that's going to do on the inside. If it's, like, a pasty thing... It's going to be pasty on your insides, too, and so it's going to be very hard to digest. So when you think of things like peanut butter or almond butter, like I said, or, you know, things that are just, like, hard to digest, like bready, doughy donuts and anything like that, those are going to be the things that are going to be an issue that are going to stick to your organs. You're going to have problems. You're going to, you know... It's just going to be, ugh, you're not going to feel good. It's going to get all messed up as it tries to go down your all your <laughs> systems that you have in your body. They get stuck. Um, that's why you want to chew things thoroughly, too. That all helps with digestion. But think of these things when we, they're already hard. We're like, like peanut butter. How hard is that to swallow? And it goes down, like, cuts down your throat and just trying to get in this, all the whole way down is difficult. So... Now, I did say you do want some things that are harder to digest than others in the sense of the calorie burning. So like meat, that's good that you got to chew it. You want to chew it, chew it, chew it. But you need to chew your meat. Don't be swallowing your meat whole. Then you will have digestive problems. I used to do that when I was bulimic. Like I would not chew it out of my steak and I would just like swallow it. And I almost died. Get this, you guys. I almost died one time from choking on steak when I was bulimic because I didn't chew it enough and when I went to go throw it back up it got stuck in my throat and it turned it lodged sideways and I couldn't breathe and I was gasping I was like uh, I was 21 years old my mom had just died and I was at my sister's house in California and no one was home and I ate a bunch of steak and then I threw up and it got stuck and no one could help me and I was like 
I was like, and I, and I was like freaking out because I was suffocating. And I thought I was going to die from a goddamn steak from being bulimic. I was like, this is how I'm going to die. Oh, well, I didn't care at that point because my mom had already died. But I was like, what a way to go. This is going to be embarrassing when my sister finds me. I choked on a piece of steak. They're going to be, they already knew I was bulimic, so they wouldn't have been that surprised. But somehow, finally, I was able to, I was gasping, 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 gasping. It, it got unlodged in time before I suffocated. But um, things like that, <laughs> you can die like that from bulimia. I mean, how crazy. My great-grandma died for me. She was a bulimic, and she hit her head on the toilet. She passed out one time while she was throwing up and hit her head and died. Um, I passed out many times, and luckily uh, people caught me um, in, out in public in Panama when we lived in Panama on the concrete, and I could have died. So there's a lot of weird ways you can die from bulimia, too, besides just being unhealthy. But everything, like, when you're unhealthy, you can have other complications because you're not functioning properly. So your body will start to do things like get sick, pass out, you know, things like that. You just get dizzy, things like that. So um, the more healthy you are, you'll find just everything is easier. Because I used to get dizzy all the time. I never get dizzy now. I used to get headaches. I haven't had a headache in years. Um, I had excruciating headaches for about 10 years. Just They were just debilitating. And I haven't had a headache ever since we started smoking weed. I even got my weed, uh, my medical, sorry, yeah, my butt started hurting this chair. It's about time for me to end this. must be time. That's when I know it's time to stick in the chair. Oh, I felt like a line probably made your line from the, <laughs> on my butt. Anyways, um, <laughs> what's I talking about? I don't even know what that. I totally lost my train of thought. But yeah, the weed, the weed, uh, so healed my, um, headaches. So if you get headaches or migraines, try weed. Oh yeah, I have my medical card for headaches. That's what I was saying. And you're allowed to get that here in, um, Nevada. You can get a medical card for headaches. That's what I went for. I told the doctor I get excruciating headaches and that was the truth. I got excruciating headaches and every year they go, well, how's it been? I was like, absolutely amazing. Ever since I've had my weed card, um, I haven't had a headache. And they're like, really? Even the doctors are surprised because they don't even know. This is all new to really study the effects of weed legally. Now we can actually do more studies because it's legal in some states. Whereas when it was all illegal, you couldn't advance it as um, quickly. The, the uh, different strains and the practice of it and the uh, study of it and the knowledge of it and all that now is advancing so much. The quality, they're getting better at making it. You can get some amazing weed now. If you haven't tried it in years, go to your local dispensary because you will be blown away and you will be stoned after your ass the first day. Man, I wish I could get as stoned as you guys could get if it's your first experience. I remember when we went to Colorado, it was our first experience. We went to Aspen, Colorado, and that was when we first tried um, legal weed. It was uh, medically legal here, but we had just never tried it. Uh, well, we didn't have a medical card, but we weren't smoking weed. So we go up there, tried the recreational, then we came back here and I got a medical card. This was 2016. And um, I remember the girl saying, because it was going to be our first experience, she said, I wish I could have the experience you guys are having right now. And I remember thinking, I, I remember thinking, that's cool, but then, wait, there's going to be a time that I'm going to be like her if I get it. It is true. And it's always great. But when you first do weed for the first time, if you haven't in a while, you will laugh your ass off. I mean, it's just so much fun. I was laughing. We took this gondola ride because Aspen's, you know, they do the ski lodges there, but we went during the summer. We went for 4th of July. So you just ride up there and you just hike around and stuff. But um, we ended up not hiking. We got so stoned that we're like, we take the gondola right over. I'm laughing my ass. We get up there and then we're like, do you feel like going for a hike? And I'm like, Jeffers goes, do you feel like going for a hike? I said, no. He's like, me neither. We're like, let's just, let's just sit here and just laugh. So we just sat there and just laughed our ass off. We just sat in chair and just looked at the view and just laughed. And then we took the gondola back down so we didn't do any exercise. But um, it was funny. Anyway, so I need to get off of this scope because my butt hurts and I feel like I've been talking for like three hours. Probably because I find out when I get off of here, it's been like two hours and I'm like, what? Because I don't even realize. Everyone's just like, I didn't know you could talk for that long straight. You know, I'm like, I know. I didn't know I could either. <laughs> all right. Catch you all later. Not the death.
I'm not impressed. I'm not amused. I'm not confused. I'm not confused. I'm a grown man business. I am not in school. Put your hand down, youngin'. This is not for you. I'm my jail, my deep with the Kanye, yo. Your name on the marquee, your name off the payroll. Style fresh. Like I'm still a day yo, and it's been like that since the day yo. On more time than a Rolly or Seiko. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get up or get out, get down. Get down. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out, check it out. Yo.